Today, we are going to be sharing our predictions for the nominees for the Game Awards. I can't believe it's already time to start talking about the Game Awards. It's, it's a new month. It's November. These are happening any day now. I know, right? So it's time to start talking about it. It's been an incredible year for games, and I think yes. it's really interesting to look at who's gonna get nominated and who might get snubbed. I know, right? And I think this is the year where there is no clear, like, this is one thing that's gonna take everything. So it's gonna make it exciting and interesting, and that's, I'm here with the popcorn. I'm ready to, like, let the drama unfold. Jeff is ready. Jeff better be ready. Jeff is licking his chops at this year. <laughs> Jeff needs to get some extra security. <laughs> oh, that's another thing. Yeah, that that is that, and he he needs to be he needs to yes he needs to be prepared. Gird for that. your loins, yeah, gird, Jeff. Gird the loins, Jeff. It's coming. <laughs> gird them hard. <laughs> um, as usual, everything on this channel is made possible by our wonderful Patreon subscribers. Thank you so much for all of your support. If you'd like to join us, we are on patreon.com slash kit and Krista. One of the fun things we do every week is a behind the scenes video, mm -hmm. which is available at certain tiers. And we go into detail about what's coming that week, what yes. other things we have going on. Maybe you get a sneak peek at a video in the future that we have not talked about. Yes. Uh, we're actually recording that always on Monday, the same mm -hmm. day we record this podcast. So if you want to get in early and hear about everything that's happening on and get a glimpse into some other things that we don't talk about as much uh, on the channel, that's a great way to do it. There's so many inside jokes now from the behind the scenes that we can't even share. Here Jailed Yoshi. You guys won't get it. If you're it. curious. Yeah, there is so many inside jokes, long running ones that are just part of the behind the scenes, which I love. It's become Kit and Krista community lore, as it were. So that's always fun. Um, over the weekend, oh. we also had a really fun one of our monthly meetups. This is my favorite monthly meetup of the year because we always do a Halloween themed monthly meetup. We had so many people come in amazing costumes. We did like a little costume contest. We gave away a big prize pack and then we all hung out and played some Mario Wonder together and it was a good time. It was so fun. Yeah, it was great to combine Halloween with that and just hang out. Mario Wonder, you know, learning is a good just kind of hangout game. Yes, very um, chill hangout game. Yeah, it was great to see everybody in costume. I had my Ninja Turtles costume yes. going, look great. You have great. Like multiple costumes this year. I do, I you do. You have a lot of looks, like yes. a wedding. You have like seven dresses. Great transition to that. <laughs> so, <clears throat> Shocktober, the great month of Shocktober has thankfully ended mercifully. Ooh. We made it out alive. That was a hard one. Uh, it always is. It's a, it's a toughie. Shocktober's <laughs> always coming for you, but now we're out of it. Yes, you made me an incredible Halloween costume. I can't believe you did this. I thought it was a joke when you said you were gonna do that. Really? Why, did you, why would you think it was a joke? I don't know. Okay, You made weird. me. You made me a Locky 2 costume. It's yeah. incredible. Uh, you were the spiny. I shot put you into the sun, <laughs> as I've been wanting to do. <laughs> yes, I have tuck and rolled into the, the, the universe, into, the, into space. It's been great knowing all of you. Um, but yeah, that was really fun. I really love to make costumes. I, the one thing I don't like about Halloween is the buy a costume, wear it once, throw oh. it away thing. Oh, that, yeah. that just kind of stinks, you know? Um, so I'm hoping that we can repurpose parts of the Locky 2 costume into just fun studio decorations. Yeah, Because yeah. the cloud is really cute. And I think totally. we can just hang it up on the wall. I mean, I, I just might wear this out on a Friday night. I mean, <laughs> you know, hit, the, hit the town. Oh, say, okay. Hey, hey, friends. I like Locky it. It's here. a conversation starter. It is. It is. Yeah. It is. And it's very comfortable to wear. It's not like one of those costumes that's like tough to wear. Right, right. Yeah. I also revealed my uh, jack-o'-lantern. There was a lot of interest oh, around what my jack-o'-lantern was. So I did a Bowser jack-o'-lantern this time. I love it. This one, I get worried about the ones where there's like Little, little bits, you no, know, little bits of pumpkin holding it all together. Because it's like if you put the wrong pressure in the wrong place, the whole like, thing can just, yeah. just fall out. The, the toothpicks are good to save oh, them just in case you I, need to. I didn't need that. I do save have a. It. Pumpkin carving knives have come a long way since our youth. Yeah. It used to just be here's the one. Yeah, now there's different sizes. Now there's one that's like so fine. Yeah, like, but it's like a little saw. You're like, just you can make very fine yeah. cuts yeah. in this pumpkin. That's true. So. I'm very happy with that, and I hope you all had a great Halloween. Yes, yes. yes. Halloween is always fun. It, it does also mark the end of an incredibly busy month. So now we're, yeah, now we're fully into November, and then the year is going to be over before we know it. Right. 
Um, but this is always a fun part of the year where there's like tons going on and we have tons of stuff still coming for you guys um, as we wrap up the year. So it should be it should be a good couple months. I'm looking forward yeah. to it. Yeah, I was thinking of like, well, what were we doing at Nintendo in November? And November is a much less busy, busy month, month yes. than you might think, especially compared to October. Yeah. Because at that point, it's like either you're ready for this or you're not. Right. You know? Either you're on the train or you've been left behind. Right. The other thing, though, is it is, it does get deep into the Game Awards prep time at yes. Nintendo in November. And you and I have both worked on many a Game Awards. And it's always great to work with Jeff, obviously. And it's exciting to work on the Game Awards because... You know, it's a big show, and there's always like some kind of spectacle that we'd be working on or an mm -hmm. announcement. Those are always fun, but it is a lot of work, and a lot of times that work happens over your Thanksgiving holiday. I think both of us have had to take calls and do work on Thanksgiving Day, mm -hmm. which is not the vibe, yeah. guys. I'd rather be like taking a turkey nap instead of taking a call. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm kind of happy, honestly, that we are now just the. The wonderful spectators get to enjoy the TGAs, enjoy yeah. the event, and like be in the audience and not have to worry and just be surprised. So that's kind of nice too. So I am I am glad that we don't have to <laughs> do all the big planning work anymore because that was tough. Yeah, it's a very short month because you got Thanksgiving and mm -hmm. you know a lot of people like take a week off and then you get into December and then it's you know there's some things you're looking ahead to next year. But I love no I love December because it's like. We'll talk about that next we'll year. We'll talk about next year. <laughs> and Nintendo was great because we always had the um, the shut we call it the shutdown, the right. holiday shutdown, where we, we we would get a big chunk of time. Very nice. At the end of the year, yes. and a lot of people take big long vacations. I used to go, you know, on a on my biggest vacation of the year, mm -hmm. usually around the Christmas holiday and then into the New Year. It's just a wonderful time because if everyone's off at the company, no one bothers you, you know. Right. So it just feels good, but. Um, yeah, it is It is nice to know that we are about to wrap up this year and there's going to be if we were counting, a fun couple months. Like yeah. we have this many podcasts until the year ends because there are some things we have to do. Right. Like we have our big game of the year episode. There's some other things too. Like right. looking back at our predictions from the beginning of the year, we have yeah. to make sure those don't pass us by. I know. We before, have we, before you know it, oh my gosh, it's 20, what's it, 2024? Yeah, we're going to run year. out of episodes. Yes. We, we were planning like pretty far. I think we're pretty much planned for the rest of the year, honestly. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, yeah, but good thing we looked because we, we had less episodes left than we thought and we were like, oh no. I know, good thing we did that. <laughs> Whoopsie. Yeah. Um, but yes, it's it's great. Um, hopefully you guys are also looking forward to just sort of this year, like s snowballing into 2024, but it's been a good year. Yeah. Um, we have a really fun recorded um, video from our Portland Retro Gaming Expo panel right. that we did, the live panel we did. We did a really fun live panel, like one of my favorites. We told these kind of zany, wacky developer stories, stuff that you guys definitely have never heard of before because they're very like, you know, like sort of normal human More moments. about them as people. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's about big announcements and big game reveals and things like that, but more about them as people. Um, and we sort of did like a rapid fire of those uh, during that live panel and we recorded it obviously since you, if you didn't go to the show you wouldn't have seen this. They, would, they weren't streaming it or anything like that and um, we put that out. So sure hopefully did. you guys are checking that one out. Some fun stories. Tell us if you have a favorite story um, because these are definitely kind of wacky. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> We are also continuing on, soldiering on, with our Mario yes. RPG streams. We are well into the back half of this game. Oh, yeah. We've got some good momentum. Exciting things are happening. We now have a full party of classic Mario characters, yes. which is great. Yeah, I'm like really surprised by how many playable characters yeah. there are. I definitely didn't expect it because I've never played this game before, so right. I didn't know that you could have these characters like join your party that was quite the fun surprise we did a part recently um on our stream uh earlier last week that i just really liked um the star oh the the wishes yeah yeah i thought that, that was, was very cute. really I like that. sweet yeah, yeah and like you can go and like listen to people's right wishes. right oh my gosh it's so cute there's so many little like charming moments in this game and i can see why people just absolutely love this game because there's just so many of those and there's even like when we were um, playing on our stream, there's so many people in our chat that's like, oh, 
try this, do that. Like you can, you can do this thing. And it's like these little things seem sort of insignificant, like by themselves, but all together they make the game so have so much personality. Which yeah, is I mean, really you take great. for granted now, like, oh yeah, these characters have personalities and we know what they are. But back then, like, this was kind of the, like the introduction of all of that, which was yeah. super special. Super cool. I've also continued to learn that you have no faith in me at all playing this game. You I go, thought you, you go were totally full gonna on, eat it in that last I don't know boss why. battle. I don't know why. I there was a dicey moment I don't know where why. two out of three characters had I wasn't worried at all. There was a there was some very strategic reviving. I pulled it game. out. The, the chat was very <laughs> nervous. Everyone's like, oh no, uh oh. Like we had a real like butt clenching moment. <laughs> but you did. You did pull it. That's what makes out. me me. I was very, very uh pleasantly surprised right. by your okay. skills. Fine, fine, fine. Um, but yes, we're continuing on. I think, yes, we're totally on track to finish this game before the remake comes mm -hmm. out. I have, like, w randomly, just because I was, like, on, like, vacation for one of the yeah. streams, I, like, missed a huge story We're not. We're not going to tell you. We're not going to tell you. And then yesterday, there was, like, some other sort of story moment as well, but I kind of didn't understand it Good. fully because I missed the first part of Good. it. So that's kind of like to my benefit, I, I think. I think so. So I'll just keep, I'll keep going, but hopefully that um, maintains an element of surprise for me yes. when I play the remake for the first time. Right. Yeah. So we do one of those a week. Uh, we have all the archives up on our channel if you want to get caught up. We also have an exciting update about what we are doing with merch. Yay! And merch is your baby, so I will let you share this first. I'm really excited about this. We So we started with merch, kind of utilizing the options that is linked directly easily to YouTube, and those were good options. Um, but we really wanted to search for a partner that could be more of a partner. The, the, the sort of the merchandising option we were using was like, Upload a design, they'll like do all the back end for you, but it wasn't really like a human that I was talking yeah. to. So we are so lucky and so happy to be now partnered with Pixel and Yes, they are wonderful. And they are wonderful. There is actually a human that I get to, <laughs> <laughs> they're great humans that I get to interact with. Um, they really want to be our partner to make our merch even better and even cooler for you guys. Um, as part of this sort of new merch refresh relaunch whatever you want to call it we are releasing some new designs that i actually designed these. you did this um and i can't wait for you guys to see it it is paying homage to our san francisco roots we are a company that is based in san francisco we are from the san francisco bay area so i made a line of designs that is sort of um paying homage to where where we're from and where this this thing takes place. Um, so we hope that you guys check it out and, and take a look. It is linked to the YouTube uh, merch shelf, so you can click through there. Um, or if you want to go on to Pixel Empire, uh, it is the Kit and Krista shop. And we'll put a link in the description if you'd like to check that out. But there's going to be more cool merch coming. I, I'm pretty sure that we're going to have like some sort of holiday thing because, you know, Kit and I both love like a good old we holiday better. sweatshirt. We better. <laughs> <laughs> I better start making some new designs. <laughs> um, so we will do something, I think, for the holidays for sure. But uh, we're excited, yeah. and I think it's going to be a really nice um, new partnership for us. I on think our so too. Side. Yes. Yeah. Finally, and gosh, it has been so busy. Final little little oh thing goodness. at the front. So we had uh, the great honor to host the Disney Dreamlight Valley Showcase. Yes. Um, it was a wonderful thing to do. Oh my gosh, what a dream come true what a, that was. What a great thing, you know, a surprise to be asked to do that. Yes. But um, <clears throat> I got to travel to Montreal, meet the team from Gameloft, and mm -hmm. be a part was, of this really special thing for them. And they were so wonderful. Yes. And such a wonderful team to work with. You know, I'm. You, we're both huge fans of Disney. We love this game as well. So being, you know, asked to host this really incredible showcase was such an honor and yeah, it was just so much fun, and we hope that you know you guys are checking this out, and it's gonna be it's gonna be a good one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you should be sure to check that out for sure. All right, we are gonna jump right into our discussion of the Game Awards very soon. But first, we have to shout out our sponsor, and we have a very new sponsor today. This episode is sponsored by Southern New Hampshire University, and specifically their online game development program, which is incredible. So, you know, we talk about games all the time. We yes. get in deep into the details. We work with, we've worked with for many, 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 many years, some of the most right. incredible gaming developers. 
of our generation. And it's fun to ask yourself, well, what if I was the developer? What would I do? Or if I was making a game myself, like what kind of game would that be? Yeah. And this program from Southern New Hampshire University can help make that a reality. Yeah, and they have really sort of um, specific skills that you can learn from this program. It gives you knowledge and experience of how to create your own video games and you know, do things like bring your characters, the environments and that's in your imagination to life with 2D and 3D modeling and you know, important things that you need to know to actually make a game, you know, texturing, game mechanics, all those important things that become a game that's fun to play, they can teach it to you. Yeah, you really get well-versed in everything you need to know. Um, you know, 3D modeling, uh, artificial intelligence for games, interface mm -hmm. design. You will be learning the three major uh, programming languages, C++, C Sharp, and Java, which is, you know, what, what so many games are made on. And your faculty will be uh, people with real world experience. So you'll be able to get connect with people who are part of this industry and you really get started. Yeah, and they'll help you with your job hunt as well after you graduate so I think this is a very connected um, faculty and community and really can help jumpstart your game development career if this is something that you have been dreaming about or wanting to do this might be a great first step for you I mean this is the sort of thing that really did not exist uh, that long ago. I think when a we were- A specific program right, designed when, for video game development? No, that did not exist right, when, when we were, when we were going up. through the college process. Yeah. It was like, well, if you wanted to become a game developer, it was a very windy and unclear path of mm -hmm. how to get started in that. And, and a program like this is, is perfect for that. Yeah, this is also accredited nonprofit and is very affordable in terms of tuition, which is very important because yes. college, college can be, and we live through this, college can be so expensive. Yeah, yeah. So go to snhu.edu slash kittenkrista, which is also linked in our description, to see if you qualify for SNHU's game development program and get more information. You might be eligible for financial aid or have previous college credits that could fast track your degree at SNHU. Click the link to get started. Oh boy, we'll put the link right here and also in the description below. All right. All right. The Game Awards. The Game Awards predictions. So what are we doing today? So we are predicting, I think we have like 10-ish categories. Yeah, and these are not all the categories no. that they have no. during the Game Awards, but kind of the, the bigger ones. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we, we decided to pull those out and we are going to predict the nominations right. in those categories. So We're not picking the winners. No. Because we could be wrong about these nominations, um, first of all. The other thing I think is important to say is like, this is what we are projecting those people will nominate. This is not necessarily our Correct. picks. Yeah. Like we'll do a whole game of the year show later. With our personal Which is all about picks. us. Yeah. But you know, Jeff has this very specific process where he has kind of this group of people mm -hmm. who represent um, different perspectives, um, you know, within media and content creation from really all over the world. And they help to pick um, the nominees and the winners. And there is a component of, of fan voting that's in there as well. So yes. You know, I think he's he's put a lot of thought into that, mm -hmm. but I think there are some ways that that group and their perspective, and frankly, you know, the limitations that they have of being just human beings who cannot play literally everything, right? Uh, it does shape what these nominations actually right. are. And again, we were saying this at the top is like this has been just a banner, unprecedented banner year of incredible games in quality, um, but also in scope. Yeah. You know, they were just, all these games are all massive. Um, and probably some of the highest Metacritics I've seen in a year. So yeah. there, this is a, this is gonna be a really interesting year because I think that these judges are going to have, they're gonna have a hard time. <laughs> they're gonna have a hard time, I think. Yeah, yeah. So uh, most of the awards have five nominees except mm -hmm. for Game of the Year, which has six. Yep. This was a good exercise for us as well to warm up our own Game of the Year. I know. Of like, oh yeah, that I game or this game. I definitely some research. Like, what did I play between January and May? The I first, yeah, the, those remember. first couple months can always yeah, be a bit foggy. Yeah, a little foggy. bit blurry. And, yeah. and then I looked it up and I was like, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, but like you were saying, like this, 
this could be the year of some big snubs where a game that you think like, oh, sure, that'll Surely be nominated. That'll be but nominated. then it's like when you start to make a list of like, oh, maybe it won't actually. It only has five. So I have to cut. Before we get into any categories, I have two games that I think are kind of in the like boom, Snug. boom or bust where it's like they're either going to get a ton of nominations or Where's they might get go? none. Which one? Starfield is one and Final Fantasy 16 I have as the other one where... Final Fantasy 16 is very shaky. Could could come out looking great. It, it's very like polarizing. I yeah. Think. So. But so is Starfield as well. And it's in a very, Starfield's you know, it's in a very something. busy, I mean, the RPG category, the RPG category is bumping this year. I had to really. That's like the place to be. Sophie's Choice, the yeah, RPG category, yeah. a lot. I was really shocked, by right. that, honestly. The other thing that I was thinking of, and, and I went actually went to the Game Awards rules to try and understand how this is handled and I, it wasn't really addressed there i'm sure jeff has some thought and maybe he'll be talking about it because i think it's a big topic for this year is there were some really big meaty um dlc packs that right, came out this year right. and i'm like how do those qualify or do they not do they, is he going to do like a best dlc i could see him doing that this he year could do that because there's like the cyberpunk update the xenoblade stuff right i was like where where, where exactly does, does that go i know i was thinking about cyberpunk because there. This game got so much, like, you know, so much fanfare. We need Idris Elba there to present an award. Oh my gosh, we do. We need a celebrity so hot. appearance. He needs to be there. <laughs> because of that. Because he's yes. hot. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, he's so hot. Uh, yes, exactly. All right, uh, let's let's dig into these. Uh, we're gonna start with the top. We're gonna start with the old goatee. No, no, let's let's see. We're not. End. We're gonna go from the bottom yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can start with goatee. All, all right, all right, all right. With you. Uh, fine. Best narrative. Let's fine. Start with best narrative. Uh, best narrative. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And then we'll we'll do Cody at the very end. Fine. Okay. Uh, why don't you read yours first, and uh, okay. I'll read mine. I also did write down some notable omissions for each of these, so yeah. we can talk about those as well. Okay. My uh, best narrative is Spider Man Two, Baldur's Gate Three, Alan Wake Two, um, Starfield, and Star Wars. Oh. I thought you were going to write them down exactly the same and even in the same order. Oh. So I had I had Spider-Man, Baldur's Gate, and Alan Wake. But my final two were Final Fantasy 16 and Starfield. Oh, I have Final Fantasy 16 as an alternate. As a notable omission. Yeah. Because I See? think it's polarizing. See? Because people say the story fell apart halfway through and I did play the entirety did, of this did game. Did these people play this game all the way through? These, these voters? They played the first like They might have played the first half and said, hey, this and... is cool. <laughs> Oh, I didn't even think about so that. So the other omission I had was Mortal Kombat 1, which you might laugh oh. at, but those games have great stories. They, they, they do. They do have great and stories. And I put, again, I put Cyberpunk here because people loved Phantom Liberty, but I don't know, again, how they're treating DLC this time. Yeah. So yeah. We'll, we'll see about Cyberpunk, that. I didn't know where to put it, so I didn't put it anywhere, honestly, because it was DLC. Yeah. I didn't know what to do with it. Yeah. But yeah. I, I think people say the story is incredible, so I, I mean, like, I could see that taking something. Totally, totally. Um... But yeah, I mean, we had some big, sort of heavy hitters in the narrative category. Uh, you did not mention Sea of Stars, which is a game you played and loved. Why, why, why would you not put that here? I think because the other games are just so much... I mean, the Sea of Stars had a great narrative, I think. But I, I just think it's going to get overshadowed by these big... So that's also a notable omission. I think so. Okay. Unfortunately, that, that's another so. one I could, I could put in the boom or bust category. I'm curious to yeah. see because sometimes there are I mean, years best where, indie like, is like the year that there. that Hades like broke out of just of just an indie and was like with yeah. I mean, you could have made a case like, oh, that should have been was game the of other the year. One that sort of yeah. was broken out. Into that was a big whiff by different. everybody. No, it wasn't. <laughs> cozy game, cozy game of the year. It was where little you little get your funny. face eaten off by aliens. So cozy. It wasn't your face. It was your body. It was a tiny cat's face and body. <laughs> it was a tiny cat's body, okay? <laughs> but yeah, I think that one is just like one of those things where people are going to be yeah. dazzled, you know, dazzled by yeah, a Spider-Man yeah, yeah. and a yeah. Baldur's Gate and an Alan Wake. A Baldur's Gate. A Baldur They're going to be dazzled by a this Baldur's Gate. This gate sure is Baldering, wow. Yeah, look at that spider. Sure is a man, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, you're going to get dazzled. Best art direction. Okay, you go first. Well, what, what, uh, oh, uh, oh, oh. One, one more thing. Should Zelda be in best narrative? Should Zelda be considered in best narrative? No. Nope. When your face has no expression, <laughs> guess what? You don't That's get not a narrative? You don't get considered for best narrative. <laughs> <laughs> no offense. All right. All right, you read best. Best art, art direction. direction. 
<laughs> please, please go ahead. No, go ahead. You, I went first with you. All right, I have Tears of the Kingdom, Final oh. Fantasy 16, Hi-Fi Rush. I have that in mind too. Which is a game that came out super early this year and I think is gonna have a pretty good representation across these awards. I think so too. It wasn't a game that really clicked with me, but a yeah. lot of people did. I'm gonna play this game before the end of the year just to see what the yeah. fuss is it's about. It's on Game Pass, It's yeah. on Game Pass, exactly. Yeah, you should. I think you should. Yeah, just to see. I also I have to. Alan Wake 2 oh. and Street Fighter 6 is my last oh, nominee Fighter for that. Oh, Street Fighter 6? Yes. That, that, that Very one, unique, what? distinct yeah. art direction. Beautiful. That's yeah. great, yeah. So I have Spider-Man 2 again, mm. Final Fantasy 16, um, Starfield, Baldur's Gate, and Hi-Fi Rush. Yeah. Starfield was like, you know, a unique, I think, in this category because it's like a different type of art direction. You know, you have like a lot of different elements of sort of vast space, but also like the the crunchy like detail mm -hmm. of a spaceship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they you did know? talk a lot about that philosophy. Yeah, yeah. so I thought mm -hmm. that that was kind of a unique thing. Again, it could be one of those things where it just gets snubbed though. Right. Because people are like looking at other stuff. Right, right. Um, uh, Spider-Man, I mentioned, like Spider-Man seems to be attempting reality, which I, that is an art direction. But the, the way that they do it is so, I don't know. There's a there's a there's a style to it that's very distinct, distinctively Spider Man. Mm -hmm. um, yes, the city is New York City. Obviously, right. you get the reality of the environment in that way. But like the way that the characters, the suits, like the mm -hmm. textures and the suits, yeah. like sort of the art direction around like enemies and and battling and all that stuff. Like it, I just feel like that. Is a, is a very sort of, is a signature for them. Yeah, different. yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Uh, I had a couple snubs. Uh -huh. I had Dordone. Oh, I which, love Dordone. Which, I mean, frankly, could win this category. Oh, I just don't, so I just don't know enough people played it. Yeah. Who are, who are voting for these nominees, sadly. Right, right. I would love to see it. Yeah. Uh, I had Diablo 4, uh. which went back to the more kind of classic Diablo look and feel. That's definitely got a very cohesive yeah. style. Mm -hmm. And I put Sea of Stars here too. You know, from the little bit that I checked out of this yeah. game, it's got it, it's, it's, it's beautiful. very beautiful. Yeah. So I want to ask you about Tears of the Kingdom. <clears throat> yeah. Why did you include it here when the art style is basically Breath of the Wild? There's really not a step sort of forward. Um, there's new stuff. I mean, you got the entire underground, which, you know, okay. was not my favorite place to be, but was a vibe. Um, and then the sky stuff. All the stuff. sky stuff. You know, you got dungeons. Okay. I, I think it absolutely still, you know, all, the, all the new costumes that they added. Mm -hmm. So you did not, you did not have that as a nominee? I did not. Okay. No. Interesting. Yeah, that's interesting. Okay. We right. have next, best score and music. Yes. Um, okay, I didn't play this game, but Hi-Fi Rush is a music-based game. That's on, so my, that's on my list. I'm assuming that and the music is great. So that's where I think, <laughs> I wonder, like, do they give that, like, extra brownie points? Because, like, oh, it's actually integrated into the gameplay right. more so, too. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Maybe. Uh, I did have Tears of the Kingdom in this one. I did, um, too. I thought that, that original score that they had with that, um, with the Urfu, which is a very unique instrument, yeah, yeah. Is, is really, really special. Um, Final Fantasy 16 is my other one. I had that. Starfield, I think, has, in my, this is, like, my own opinion, but I think has one of the best, like, theme, game theme music of the year. I had that, too. And Star Wars is my other one. I didn't play this game, but I feel like Star Wars might, must have good music. <laughs> you didn't put Baldur's Gate on the list? I didn't. Down by the river? Okay, down by the river. I don't know. I'm gonna go down by the river and throw you in the river for that. <laughs> oh my god! Diablo two is another one. I did not have that on my list. Okay, Baldur's Gate. So I had I had Diablo Tears of the, the Kingdom, river. Baldur's Gate, Final Fantasy sixteen, Starfield, and Hi-Fi Rush. Uh -huh. My notable omissions are Octopath Traveler two. Oh. This is the game that's getting the big Scroogey this year. That, that game major, is totally forgotten. Major Scroogey coming. I mean, people last year were so happy, like, oh, Xenoblade got nominated. Thank goodness. This, like, so many people, like, this is, like, the greatest soundtrack, you know, I've heard in years. Oh, gosh. And I, I, I don't think it's going to get nominated. I don't think it's even on It came out radar. earlier in the year. The Too game bad. was incredibly long. I don't know no. how many people worked through it. No. Um, Sorry. I think a lot of people could just say this game wasn't for me. 
I think this game should be on the list. I don't think it's going to be. Thin. It's not going to it's, be. It's, yeah. yeah. Uh, sea of Stars, which is a game I have not played, but I heard the, the music is great. The and then I had Street Fighter Six as well on there. You know, kind of new yeah. take on, on Street Fighter music, which is which is a classic. I feel like I put, should have put Street Fighter in more categories. And again, the nominees for these get the great performance by the Game Awards Symphony. That's true. If I don't hear the symphonic down by the river, I'm going to be mad. They might be a special performance, though. They might they, have I, voice. I know. So. Like, I, I, am, I you have been imagining. Do, you need to be down by the river I have right been now. imagining <laughs> the live performance of Down by the River, like, for months now. Okay, then. Like, yeah, it's, gonna gonna, it's definitely going to happen. This is going to be this special. This might be Game of the Year. This is going to be special. So. This is going to be special. Okay, I guess they do do other things for Game of the Year nominees, it too. It might be, like, really good. I need this. And I'm really upset that you didn't put that in there. <laughs> Even though these are not your picks. These are not. This is like panel. <laughs> IGN and Take GameSpot and Jeff Grubb and all these people, they're definitely putting this on her. <laughs> <sighs> okay. Okay. Um, next, we next. have Best Indie. Okay, obviously Sea of Stars, Hi-Fi Rush, Pizza Tower, Dredge, mm. and my last name is Cocoon. Dredge uh, and Cocoon yeah. I did not play. Dredge you played for a little bit. I did not. Oh, uh, yes, I played the demo of that. Yeah. You are saying that Hi-Fi Rush is an indie. This is a game from Microsoft, the oh. world's biggest company. How can you? Is it not an indie? Please, ju please justify this. It's by a studio that Microsoft themselves own. Oh, I thought it was an indie. I think game. that disqualifies. Does them. It? Okay, then I will have to take <laughs> I think it out. They're disqualified. Well, what? So, if you're if you're going to dump that, then what are you going to put in there? I don't know. Can I recommend I Dave the Diver? I was going to say Dave the Diver. I think that's yeah. I think that's a I good one. I think it might be Dave the Diver. Yeah. yeah. So I have Sea of Stars. Can I recommend Dave the Diver. <laughs> I have the making of Karatika, and let me tell you why. You hope that it let is. Let me know, let me tell you why. That game has had a very strong critical response. True. I think a lot of people, it, it's very short, very easy to get through. This also plays think, to the Game Awards. I think challenges. a lot of people checked it out. I think mm -hmm. a lot of people respect this for what it is. Right. And it is different from the other games here. Um, so maybe, maybe I'm reading too much into that, but yeah. I. I always see people, like the quotes that people like talk about this game, like, oh my gosh, this mm -hmm. is like so glowing. So that, that could be cool if that made it there. I also had Pizza Tower and, I, pizza I, tower. and I also had Cocoon. Okay. So many notable so good, omissions notable. though. I had Venba, Oxenfree yes. 2, uh, my, my beloved Viewfinder, D Dordone, Dordone Viewfinder, yeah, Viewfinder. and then Bomb Rush Cyberfunk is a game that I did not play, but, but a lot of people lot of like this were excited for. Yeah. So, I mean, we just came up with a second five games. Maybe they should do, like, Indie Game 1, Indie Game 2. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, they can't do I that. I mean, you could have the Krista Indie category of, um, of, of Star Star Field. Starfield, Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, and Spider-Man 2. I mean, those, those kids need some help. <laughs> <laughs> ah, the Indie Games. Cocoon... Are you going to play that? I don't know. Is it scary? I looked up what it is, and I, I don't think it's a game for me, but... People seem to love it. What is it? It's um, kind of like a, um, what's that game now? Journey-ish. Oh. Journey-ish, maybe. Mm. You might like it. Okay. I think I think you should be, of, of the two of us, I think you should okay. be the one. I, I'm, I'm going to volunteer you to play. As tribute to yeah. play? Okay. Oh, here we go. Best family game. Guess what? Super Mario Brothers Wonder. Yeah? Is going to be on there, obviously. Yeah? Kirby's Dream Land. Kirby's Return to Dreamland. Kirby's Return to yeah. Dreamland, yes. Uh, Minecraft Legends I put on there. Oh, that was this year. Did you forget year. that game? Uh-huh, I'm gonna put that, I'm gonna write that down, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Um, I have, uh, what's it called? Uh, so whatever that new Sonic game was called. Sonic Superstars. Thank you, Sonic yeah. Superstars. Um, I did have Hi-Fi Brush on here again, but is that a family game? I don't even know. <laughs> is, it um, is it Cat in it? I wouldn't really say that, but is it like rated? What's it rated? Well, let me let me take you through a, a better list of nominees: <laughs> Mario Wonder, Pikmin Four, the oh, new WarioWare. Is Pikmin a family game? Hey, don't get started with your Pikmin stuff. It's not a family game. Don't get though. started. It's not for little kids. If, no? if you're vote, if you're nominating this, you're gonna think it is. Because this is just the catch-all Nintendo category. Like, oh, that's for babies. Here we go. It's not for babies. It's like really hard. They don't know. The they don't care. This die. is what they think. They didn't they play die it. A horrible. Mind-numbing death. We have, so I said the new WarioWare, which isn't out yet. Important to oh, know. the new WarioWare. Disney totally Illusion forgot. Island. Oh, I totally forgot that game. Yes. Oh, no. And Sonic Superstars as well. So Disney no, Illusion Island is a good pick. I yeah. think that one I is, think, yes. I think you are right. More than one. Kirby's Return to Dreamland, I think. 
that's more deserving. Yeah, that's a remake. Original game over remake. That's a whole nother topic. What? The role of remakes. Well, the Kirby. And what happens with remakes. Like Resident Evil 4, Metroid yeah, Prime. I didn't put that on here. Do they have a remake category? Can they have a remake? I mean, he might make one. He might need remake DLC category. Best, like, reimagined experience or something. Oh, that's a good Jeff category. Right, right. But, but he did not do that last year. No, because there weren't, weren't, weren't as many. Yeah, I mean, earlier mm -hmm. in the year, yeah. we were thinking, like, hey, if some of these remakes are so good, they could really stand out. But there have just been so there's many good, many good original, uh, original games. games. Yeah, it's not it, going to happen. It, it, it's hard to do it. It is not going to happen. So are you, are you, are you dumping Kirby or not? We don't have to. I don't want to. All right, then don't. But I, I do like the addition of Illusion Island. I think I'm pretty sure that's going to be on I, I am very disappointed in myself because I love that game. Yeah. <laughs> and I forgot about it. Uh-oh. Oh. oh. Best action game. This one is so interesting because I really struggle to even come up with five games for this. Really? This cat, I mean, so later on you have best action adventure and that is the okay, category. That's the category. I got confused between action game and action adventure. So action game is like Bayonetta. Whereas action adventure is like a Tears of the Kingdom okay. or a Spider-Man where it's it's like equal parts Okay, then I action. did this wrong. You did it wrong. Yeah. Well, let me take you through my action Because then I need to move my action nominees to action adventure nominees. Like this used to be a very packed category, but it's like, I don't... How many? A lot of... There's Armored not... Armored Core is definitely one of them. So I had right? Armored Core 6. I did have Resident Evil 4 Remake here. You could argue... an action I game? don't know. You could argue. I was struggling to come up with five. What about that game Lies of P? That's supposed to be like oh, Dark that's... Souls kind of game, right? Is that yeah. an action game? I haven't played enough to know if it's more action or action. That That's a good one. I should have I should have thought. I feel like I, I put Lies of P into action game because I this, thought that's what it was. This is also the category for shooters. There were not a lot of shooters this year. I I did put the new Call of Duty. I, I was going to say the new Call of Duty is going to be in the multiplayer category for Modern sure. Warfare 3. Yeah. The game's not out yet, but I think it'll be there. I did put Hi-Fi Rush here. What about the Wolong game? Is that an action game? Well, you didn't like it, but I didn't other like people it. like it. Did they? I don't know. Did they? I don't think a lot. I don't, of, I don't think a lot of people played that. All right. So see, I, I don't know. I'm confused. My about final this. pick for that was Exoprimal. Good old Exoprimal. Yes, that's definitely an action game. Right. Yeah. And then in some snubs, I really struggled with this. Uh, the Dead Space remake. Uh, Again, a remake. Again, you wonder like what um, uh, horror or like horror games. Horror action? Is that an action no, game? No, you can't do that because then what about Alan Wake? You have to put that in his own category? No, you're not doing that. I put that in action adventure. So I, that, that's again, this is ultimately a not our problem, but this felt like a very, this one of the most the thin, thin I was shocked at how thin this category was. I guess there's not a lot of people that do pure action games anymore. We just do action Right, it's kind adventure. of a genre. Action adventure is where you are making the at. game. If you are making a big... Well, action adventure is yeah. just going to be like Tears of the Kingdom, Spider Man Two, Final right. Fantasy Sixteen. Like that—that that is what right. that. So, do you even have action game nominees? Well, I or did you? I put all my action adventure games into action game, which is wrong. Oh, so I should just move all right. them all. Well, down. let's let's. Um, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna ask a question that we're gonna revisit later. Oh. Where should Final Fantasy Sixteen go? Is it a role playing game? Is it an action okay, game? Okay, see, I was confused <laughs> by that too. I, I think that is a that huge too. question. I, I put it into action game. I'm sorry. I put it, yes. I, you I can absolutely it argue. action adventure. But it, it doesn't have RPG battling, though. I might say this is more of an action game than an action adventure game or a role-playing game. So, see, this is these where are, these three categories got confused. So, the action adventure games, these are all, like, a lot of these are open world. Yes. Like, big exploration. Big. Whereas, yeah. like, there was no, there was not an open world no, in like Final in Fantasy 16. Sort of a linear little area. This game is like modeled on like Devil May Cry, which is an action game. Okay. It says Final Fantasy. I did. I originally it is in my action game category, Final Fantasy 16. So I am gonna be fascinated to see where that goes. I put it in RPG. They didn't want it to be. Oh, they don't have a JRPG. They don't get a choice. Oh, Jeff Keighley. Be mad. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Keighley is on. They're gonna fight. He's walking on eggshells with this one. Oh, they're going to fight. He's going to get a snarky he's, email. He's going to get pushed on stage by the Final Fantasy devs. <laughs> what? Pushed out. He's going to get bullied on stage? We're not a JRPG. He's going to take, the, they win action game, they just like throw the trophy on the ground. <laughs> this isn't us. <laughs> <laughs> eh. 
<laughs> well, again, I'll be there with the popcorn, so it'll be fun. All right. Um, so let's move on to action adventure then. Okay, so then then it's like Tears of the Kingdom. And this is the most stacked category. I, well, I guess I so, because I thought that it was all, I, I was trying to split it, but it's not okay. though, because it's Tears of the Kingdom, it's Spider-Man, it's um, Star Wars. Is Diablo an action adventure game? That's an no, RPG. it's an RPG. That's an RPG. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Alan Wake. You you have a major omission of a game that you played and loved. Hogwarts Legacy? Yes. I didn't, I don't know. Now I you hate like it? That, no, I love this game, but I think this game is going to get totally snubbed. It's possible. So my nominees are Zelda, Star Wars, Alan mm -hmm. Wake 2, yes. Spider-Man 2, yes. and I did have Hogwarts Legacy. Oh, yeah. Oh. The, the snubs. Assassin's Creed. Assassin's Creed, the new yeah. Assassin's Creed Mirage. Bayonetta Origins oh, I forgot about was a that great game, game that's, that's very action-adventure. Not going to make it. Metroid Prime Remastered, and yeah. then Like a Dragon, Gaiden, which is the, the version that, the, or the game that's not out yet. Right, right. We but played Ishian. We early. played Ishian earlier. Yes. That's that's so forgotten by everybody at this point. Oh gosh. Not by me though. Oh, I love I'm it. I'm just I'm just putting that out there I'm still for, thinking for, about for when we do. Running naked down the streets. I'm just saying, not forgotten by me. It's gonna be in the hottest game character category <laughs> for sure. So hot. So that's actually a pretty clean five. It's a clean five. What would you so what would you bump Hogwarts Legacy for? Uh, what do we have? Okay, Spider... It's five. Because I, I think we agree on Zelda, Zelda Star, Wars, Star Wars, Alan Wake, Alan Wake Spider-Man. And Spider-Man. Those are the four what we about, agree. What about um, Starfield? That's an RPG. Oh, we, th we think it's RPG. Oh, dear. RPG. This is this is getting very shaky for you now. Is it really an RPG? Yeah. <laughs> These categories are confusing. Well, it is true. I mean, there's so many genres are like mashed up now. shooting and stuff. Is it a shooter? Is it it's, an RPG? There's is a lot it, of shootery. Is it an things. action adventure? That was that was less of a I, I had no dilemma with that. That's Fine. an RPG. Fine. So then what? So is so I guess you could put it on because, because I, you just bumped my Starfield into all of those RPG. snubs. Feel like a step beneath those other unless you want to yeah. make a case for Assassin's Creed, which I I'm that game kind of didn't really catch on. Yeah, that, that game really didn't catch on. What happened? I feel like no one's well, talking people, about Well, that people game. said they, they didn't want the 100-hour RPGs, but and then they didn't buy it when they did something else. <laughs> people are the worst. <laughs> <laughs> mm, it's not just exactly what I wanted. Just snapping that pencil. I'm not going to buy it. Yeah. I just need it. It's like, a, it's like the, the bowls of porridge, but with like games. <laughs> yeah. And this needs to be just right. I need right. you like to have give me like a solid 31.5 I mean, hours. What I was saying was I want a 95-hour RPG. Those last five hours killed me. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Ah, they're let's, gonna lose their minds. Let's move on to next RPG. Okay. RPGs. Yes. Sea of Stars. Okay. Um, I guess Starfield. <laughs> because yeah. Because we're putting that in the RPG category. Well, what did you? I mean, what did you have before? I had Sea of Stars. Oh, you only Stars, had three things. Fire Emblem, Persona Five, Tactica. Oh, Fire Emblem. And then I didn't know what was else was considered an RPG. I was like really confused by this. Okay. So I had Final but Fantasy. I guess Starfield is on this list. Yes. Uh, Diablo is on this list. I didn't right. think that I, I didn't think that would be, but I guess it can be. You also did not have Baldur's Gate. What is your agenda against Baldur's Gate? <laughs> What's the deal? Is it? Is it? I guess it is. Yeah, that, that's definitely not. What are you talking about? I just forgot. <laughs> Do you have a clue? You didn't take this seriously. This is why I'm not the one judging this. I so toiled I over this list. RPG. Toiled. Okay, Baldur's Gate can be on the Here, list. Let me give you the real list. Final <laughs> Fantasy 16, Diablo 4, Baldur's uh -huh. Gate 3, Starfield, and Sea of Stars. There's your five. Very long list of snubs, though. Octopath Traveler 2, again. Again, yeah. Brutally, I don't think is going to make it. The Mario RPG re remake. He needs a remake category. My conclusion yeah. is that he needs a remake that category. That game... I don't know what his cutoff is to get the, oh. the, nomina the nominators... The game. That's right. When that, is that game coming out? It's like the seventeenth. Might be too late. It might be too late, and and Nintendo doesn't care. They don't care. It's like you. And get, also, this is a remix, so they really don't. You'll care. get it when you get it. Yeah. Uh, we have the Xenoblade DLC. We have the Cyberpunk DLC. How does he deal with that? I don't know. Mm. And then finally, you, you mentioned Fire Emblem. What about Persona Five Tactica? We'll put that in the snubs. Okay, I think yeah. that deserves to be up there. People love this game. Yeah, it's a snub for sure. Oh man. But, yeah, action-adventure and best RPG are really tough. I just think 
maybe this is too confusing. I think we may need different categories. <laughs> yeah, you do reach a it's point too, where these genres like, are too muddled. It's too muddled. It, and it, it, it goes back to the whole thing of like, these games are so big, it's doing everything. Yeah. You know, it's it's giving you like every single genre like in this. But big, when you ask a question game. of is Baldur's Gate a RPG, I start to get worried about you. <laughs> when are we playing Dungeons and Dragons? I'm gonna show you what a role playing game is. <laughs> <laughs> what role are you gonna play? I'm gonna dungeon master the bejesus out of you. <laughs> You're gonna see what this RPG is about. I can't wait. <laughs> show me. <laughs> My expectations are high. Best multiplayer. Okay. I have uh, Street Fighter in this category, yeah. obviously. Diablo, um, Call of Duty, yeah. back to Minecraft Legends. Like you didn't have that on your list at all. I've, I completely forgot. You about forgot that. about <laughs> Minecraft I'm, Legends. I'm sorry, Minecraft. How could you do another this? another little indie game? I keep forgetting about. Yeah, I, I only have four though. Where did what did you? What's your fifth one? F zero ninety nine. Oh, there it is. F zero ninety nine. Oh. Call of Duty. Okay. Diablo, Mortal Kombat. Oh, Mortal Kombat. And Street Fighter. There is a, so there is a fighting okay. game category. We didn't predict that one because it's it's really like a two game. It's a two game category. Yeah, but yeah. those are those are great choices. Okay, there. yeah, yeah, Snubs, that makes sense. Baldur's Great Gate Three. People made so much noise about that co op mode. I never no tried, tried it. it. I Not never even tried us, it. The people that love co op. So I think that gets snubbed. Party Animals was a game I didn't <laughs> play that? that had a. It was like real hot for like a week. Um, I didn't play it. I didn't play that. And then I guess yeah, Minecraft, Minecraft Legends yeah. can be that multiplayer is good, like really good. Well, uh, which one? Minecraft Legends. That game also didn't catch didn't, on the way. On. Maybe kind, the little kids are playing in a way that kind of surprised me. The little kids might be playing it though. It's possible. Yeah, the children. So I think that's a pretty clean fi five, and I and I don't think there's a ton mm -hmm. past it unless there's something big that I'm just completely missing. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. You don't think F Zero will get nominated? I guess so. It doesn't feel like a real game. Huh? It just feels like one of those like temporary things, I guess. Watch it if it wins and then gets delisted. That's like, what you're I was like, thinking. <laughs> that, like, so funny. Do people think, do they, they think through that, those steps? <laughs> that would be hilarious. It's going to get a, get now a TGA I, and get delis delisted. Now I want that to happen. I swear to you that's going to happen. I really want that to happen. <laughs> it's going to be like a year later and be like, we are deleting FCA. <laughs> does, Jeff, does Jeff Keeley get the trophy does back? He take it back. Yeah. yeah he does gets he, like exit out. Right, right. If you de if you delete the game, you don't get the trophy. Get guess it's what? like some of these when sometimes like sports teams get caught cheating and they have to like give up the the, the title. Oh. And then it's like, well, by default. Oh, by default, this other, <laughs> the other the, the next candidate wins. Jeff better be keeping track of these percentages. Yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. It's gonna be like it's they have to like send it to like Capcom or something because it's like the next. Oh, like Exo Primal is the other one I should have mentioned there as another uh, another potential. Yeah, snub. that's a very. I think that could be a snub. Yeah. yeah. Best adaptation. Oh. So this is so this is the last this one. Is, this is gonna be. This is the last one we're trouble. doing um, before game of the year. This is a very fun category he added last year. And it's even more fun this year because of what happened this year in terms of people's like releases. Of right. So this is what is something that is not a game but was based on a game. Right. So last year the winner was um, what? Arcane Legends. Yes, the um, League of Legends League of TV Legends, show. So this TV is like you know Netflix. movies, TV yeah. shows, other but things. But other things that were like nominated that. like Cyberpunk Edge Runners, like they had a whole yes. bunch of stuff. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, okay. Obviously, the Mario movie. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, the Last of Us HBO TV show. Mm -hmm. um, the there's a couple other like video game sort of movies like Tetris. Um, oh, uh, Tetris. Gran Turismo is the other one. Um, there's the Castlevania uh -huh. Netflix show. Yeah. There's Twisted Metal, yeah. which is terrible, and I don't want to watch it. People said that wasn't as bad as but people, as we thought. Like, and then there's also the crazy Five Nights at Freddy's that did like crazy yeah. box office dollar bills from Blumhouse. Blumhouse. Um, so there's a lot of like movie. There's a lot of heavy hitting movie. TV you did not mention Super Nintendo World. Oh! Which I think, which I think counts. I didn't even think of it's, that. I mean, it, it's, oh, I it's a little that. out of the box and that it's not a movie or oh, TV show. Oh, that's so show. interesting. But I think it should oh, be... Oh, man. A, yeah. Or does it... Well, hmm. so that opened in the U.S. this year. Opened in Japan earlier. Last year? Are they going to throw the book global? at this? 
How's he gonna? I how's he gonna he's judge just that? Gonna only include movies, honestly. I don't know. Well, we all know it's gonna come down I mean, to the Mario is, movie and Last of Us. This is your That's big chance to get a big celebrity to come out. You know, get get Chris Pratt well, on Jack stage. Well, Black was already at the TGA um, anniversary concert. He's, at, he's absolutely coming. So oh, he's, 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 he's gonna be singing. Sure. He's gonna get, get ready to sing that again. He's gonna sing Peaches again right. all around that floor. So I had the Mario movie, Super Nintendo World, Five Nights at Freddy's, mm -hmm. Gran Turismo, yeah, and The Gran Last Tur of Us. Yeah. With yeah. snubs being Twisted Metal, Castlevania, and Tetris, which I forgot about Tetris. Tetris, that, that's, yeah. That's, that's a great movie. That, that should um, be considered. Yeah. But this, yeah is, this is a tough category, too. That's going to be tough. It's, it's totally going to be like Sony versus Nintendo. Last of Us versus the Mario movie. Right. Darkness versus Light. That's a tough one. That... Who do you think is going to win? Five Nights at Freddy's. <laughs> <laughs> and then they're going to split the vote. Yeah, they split the gonna vote. Be, it's going to be Twisted Metal. <laughs> <laughs> and they get the, the weird uh, sweet the tooth guy to come out. The guys yeah. come and scare the bejesus out of no, us. No, thank you. Whew. Yeah, the adaptation category is going to be... I, li I love that. I really like this category. This, this year. I, I think really it's like going to be category. fun. Yeah, it's going to be fun. <clears throat> All, right, All right, fine. Game of, game of the year now. Goaty. Yes. I need to write it down because I was like... You I didn't write it down? I commit to this. But I know what it is. So you, you're going to forget right Here now. Here we go. Tears of the Kingdom. You, now remember, we get six games. Listen. Six games. Tears of the Kingdom. Uh-huh. Spider-Man uh -huh. 2. Baldur's Gate 3. Final Fantasy 16. Mario Wonder. Uh-huh. And Alan Wake. You just read off of my list. That's I did. That's exactly what I had. I was looking this way. I, I did the, not looking at your list. I have the exact same thing. You did? Yeah. In that order. Dang. I did not yeah. read off your list. You was looking this way. I did not read off your list. But that's what it is. My omissions, because we have okay. the same list, are Star Wars, okay. Sea of Stars, yes. the Resident Evil remake, yeah. Street Star Fighter Field. Six, Star and Starfield. Field so Starfield, it? snub, Star snub a Rooney. Get a snub <laughs> I really went back and forth of which one's going to be Final Fantasy or Starfield. I think it's going to be Final Fantasy. You know, those are both games that, with the, the voting power base, power of the legacy I, of the franchise. I think the opinion is very mixed on the voting base on both of those games. Oh yeah. So it could be either one though. Yeah, it really. Could be it's a like a, it's like a coin flip. It's a coin flip, right. exactly. So if if there's no Final Fantasy, then it's going to be Starfield, vice versa. I mean, that, so Zelda, Baldur's Gate, and Spider Man seem like Locks. real shoe ins. Locks. Mario Wonder, I think, will squeak in. I think so too. Alan Wake is like the the new hotness that is benefiting. It is so hot right from now. From the time it's coming out, yeah, a little bit recency bias, as you say. I mean, it's, it's a great game, so it's not like I'm taking that away, but it, yeah. it helps that it's like I just played this, I loved it, and now I get to vote on the nominee. Exactly, it's like in your head. Totally, yeah, totally. It's in your or in your recent memories. So Star Wars. Star Wars came out too early this year, and sorry. people did have some issues that had some. Kind of a rough launch. Mm -hmm. Sea of Stars, it might just be... It's just going to be overshadowed again. Yeah. The, the glimmer of the, the other games will overshadow Resident it. Evil, we talked about that. Street mm -hmm. Fighter, it's it's honestly just tough for a fighting game so to tough. get in. Yeah. <clears throat> and then, yeah, Starfield. Polarizing, I think. Yeah. I loved it, but polarizing. It has not had the staying power. That's the thing. That maybe they would have wanted. this is the toughest year for staying power, honestly. Like, there has not yeah. been, even Tears of the Kingdom, they, that enjoyed the longest staying power, I think, of the year so far. That and Baldur's Gate. But even that was pretty short compared to the Breath of the Wild steering, yeah. staying power. Like, yeah. it was like three months versus like a year and six months. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, it's just so tough this year. I mean, maybe it's just gonna be tough moving forward. But it, this year was just, so different, I think, than anything else that we've been through. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so Jeff said the nominees will come out mid-November, or he'll do kind of, he's been making a big deal out of these Yeah, he's been reveals. tweeting every day, like, who do you want in this category, whatever. Yeah, so, so he's getting ready for getting, that. We're getting going Hasn't here. said an exact day, but I think, you know, we will have this out before that happens so we can judge uh, together how we did. I know, right? And I'm again, excited. These, these are not our personal... No. Picks. This is what we think. The yes. nominating board or whatever it is. Yeah. Will pick. We will we will one hundred percent do our own game of the year episode that will be our personal picks and that's gonna be really, right. really fun. And we're gonna have a hard time, I and know. Apparently you won't be nominating Baldur's Gate for anything. Cool. I need to play more of that game. Get back to that game. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's my my forgotten stepchild. <laughs> cool, that was fun. That was so fun. We now have 
uh, some input from our Patreon subscribers as well. So oh, yes. we were talking about like games that could get lost in the shuffle. Mm -hmm. So we asked people like, you know, it's like, yeah, we all know the big ones that are guaranteed to get some nominations. Like, what are some other games that again people might just forget about or yeah. just can't quite are really deserving, but that. just can't squeak in? Yeah. So Sharif Jackson said, fighting games mm -hmm. rarely are considered for game of the year, but Street Fighter Six and Mortal Kombat One are truly phenomenal and deserve consideration. Very true. Agreed. Cyber says, I feel like Dordogne slid quietly by, but it absolutely deserves recognition for its art. It's gorgeous and really feels like you are playing in a painting. The use of its color palettes between past and present is great too. In fact, as I type this, I have a screenshot from the game as my current desktop wallpaper. Beautiful game, completely agree. Yes. This will get some recognition when we do I ours. I hope so, yeah. Oh, you oh, hope oh, so? Oh, oh, ours, yes. You, you have a say ours, 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 yes. And then finally, Solid State says, I think Bomb Rush Cyberfunk completely flew under everyone's radar. While it isn't my goatee, it was still one of my favorite games of the year, doing a great job of making a modern jet set radio style game with really fun movement and a great soundtrack. Mm. It feels like that game had a big week and then kind of... Fizzled out. Again, people's attention yes. is just really... Just, you know, it's hard. Very hard. Very, Very hard. hard. Yeah. All right, let's get into our story time for the week. Um, we actually had our Patreon superstars vote on, strangely, we had two We Fit stories. We'll tell the other one at some point. We'll do the other one another time, yeah. but this one. Overwhelmingly, they voted for this one. Right, and maybe it's just because we did a story about dogs a few weeks ago, but this is also, this is about a dog and it's your dog. My doggy, Chowder, my baby. Um, this is a story about Chowder, who was featured in a We Fit commercial. Wow. Not a national campaign, so not like a commercial that was on TV, but this mm. is a commercial that we were working on with our retail team. Oh. They wanted to film sort of like an official ad that showed all the new features of We Fit, including the dog weighing feature. Right. Um, and they wanted to have that in all of these retail. So I see, I see it on the hundred TVs when I walk into Target and Best Buy. Right, like right, that. exactly. So this is exactly. We Fit Plus, then We Fit Plus. Okay. Yes, exactly. And this was again, it was to show off some of the new features, and one of them, and people love dogs, obviously. Yeah. So one of them was the the dog weighing feature, which is really fun because you like have to pick up your dog, <laughs> right? Yeah. And, and and step on the balance board, and then it weighs your dog. Um, but yeah, we, I've actually been to quite a few, all different kinds of commercial ad shoots mm -hmm. with our team, whether it is the retail team or like big national campaigns. So going, doing that was always a bit out of our comfort zone because we worked on the comms team and we didn't have like too much knowledge into the process and, and sort of what they did on the ad side. Um, but once you get to an ad shoot, you always like learn so much about like what that all entails, and it's always like very involved. You know, there's like yeah. the the what, video village, what they call it, where you can sit and watch the the, the actors as they shoot the commercial. Like, it's always an, it, interesting when you like think about like a two second shot taking like two hours to set up and film. Like, gosh, that's such a lot of work. But for this one, it was like, yeah, full-blown, even though it wasn't like a national campaign, it was a full-blown ad shoot. The really cool part about this was like, they had the location in Marin County, which is like sort oh. of a little bit further north than San Francisco, a really beautiful part of the Bay Area where um, th there's a lot of like redwood, redwood trees, um, beautiful views of, um, of the city, uh, of San Francisco, of, um, of sort of the mountains. And this house was incredible. Incredible. Like some architect, fancy, like rich guy built this house, but didn't live there full time and would just rent this house out for commercials. That's a thing that people may not know about. So yeah. like a lot of times you see a commercial and there's people in a house. It's like, well, they need to find this house. Yeah, it's not and just it, like some random house. It needs to fit a certain style. look and style. Yeah. And yeah, it's not just like, oh, the director's like, yeah, come on over and shoot at my house. It's yeah. like, no buddy, your house is a dump. We need this giant right. palatial thing. Location like scouting for a commercial yeah. is very challenging. You have to get, if you're doing it in a public place, you have to pull permits, mm -hmm. like, it's really hard. So doing it in a house is actually like pretty easy because you can just get like the permits from the person that owns right. the house. Um, so anyways, I was like really, it was beautiful. Like this property was just unreal. It was like glass and really modern, 
really like sort of the minim minimalistic style. It had like all these like glass walkways over these like really beautiful gardens. Um, so the house is gorgeous. And, and if you're going to be there all day shooting a commercial, might as well sit somewhere nice. Yeah. You know? Um, the other thing, cool thing about being on an ad shoot is they had craft services, which is basically like they cater food for you. They also. had the omelet station. They, we didn't. The, the glorious omelet station was there. They basically had someone cooking and they even had craft services for the dogs. Like they even had little like really? water dishes oh, and wow. like doggy treats and like. I think they had like doggy <laughs> bowls because they probably didn't want to feed your dog like random food. Yeah. So you can bring your own food right. for your dog. But they had like a little doggy craft services. Oh. Because it, it was not just chatter. It was like other dogs right. there too. Um, I think there were like three dogs total of different sizes. And uh, it was really fun because um, they... You know, they wanted dogs that were like friendly. Obviously, Chatter was very friendly. Yeah, how did Chat how did Chatter get chosen for this? I think it was like, oh, like who has dogs in the office that would like who with a dog that would be like okay with something like Nobody this? Nobody asked me. Oh, I guess Baron would have been fine for it, huh? He's stolen cute. the scene. He's so cute. Can you pick him up? Is he like very heavy? He's <laughs> heavy, right? He's sixty pounds. Okay, Chatter's lighter than that. Yeah. Chatter's only like fifty. Yeah, like fifty pounds. Yeah. yeah. He's a small, like, German, like, he's not a full-bred German Shepherd, so he's not that big. Um, I, I, I do think they were asking for, like, medium-sized mm. dogs as well, because you have to pick them yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. Um, the other dog was, like, a, I think it was, like, a um, Australian Shepherd, those oh, kinds of dogs. Yeah. So it's, like, also medium-sized. Okay. Um, but the, the funny part was, if you guys remember the Wii Fit commercials and like, the look of the Wii Fit commercials, everybody would always be wearing all white um, cause like that was like the aesthetic for it, right? It's like a white balance board. People would be in sort of all white fitness gear, like this very modern kind of clean setting, but like all white plus a bunch of dogs is a really bad idea. Get some lint rollers. Chatter is like really shetty, but also like paw prints. Oh yeah. Like we went through a lot of paw, <laughs> like, um, baby wipes yeah, to wipe yeah. the paws. And like, you just, like, I don't even know how these people were going to pick up these dogs because it's like, immediately you're going to be covered in like mud. It was like, also like a little bit rainy that day uh, too. No. So like, if they were like walking outside yeah. in the in the garden, like sniffing around, because it was a long day. It was full eight hours. Mm -hmm. Like they were had to like wait around for this shoot. Um, yeah. So like you pick this dog up and it's like muddy paw prints all over your white outfit. So that was like a little bit challenging. And I remember the director getting like really annoyed. He was like, okay, if the, the dog tries to put his paws on you, just push the dog away. I'm like, don't push my dog. Oh, no. <laughs> Peter. <laughs> don't push my dog away. Um, but Chatter did a great job. He like was, I think he was a little bit bigger than maybe they expected. So they had the, like the dad in the commercial pick up Chowder. Um, Cause the little kids obviously couldn't pick him up. Um, he was very calm. You okay being picked up by a stranger? He was okay being picked okay. up by a stranger. I don't know if he'd be okay with that now, honestly. Yeah. He's like older now, so he's kind of like persnickety about who pets him. Yeah. He's like, he'll like lean away from you like, oh. But at that time, he was only like, he must have been only like six years old or so. So mm. he was very like easygoing. <laughs> um, but yeah, he was in this commercial. It was really fun. And... Yeah, later on, we did have some cool, like, Wii Fit, Nintendo Minute things with Chatter and Baron. Yes. So Chatter has been in multiple Wii Fit-related hmm. Nintendo things, um, which is kind of funny. Because fun. he's the laziest dog <laughs> that you would ever meet in your life, and he would just, like, lay there and sleep all day. Just like Baron, so... <laughs> It's what yeah. you want, I guess, in a, in a dog actor. Yeah, yeah, just, like, real chill right. dog, mm -hmm. you know? So, yes, Chatter was very good. He did not get paid. <laughs> He is not part of SAG, oh. unfortunately. He got paid in dog treats from the from the craft the doggy craft services, hmm. which was fun. But no, he he was. And there. all the other dogs were from the office too. I believe so. Yeah, it's just they wanted a free dog. On the cheap, jeez. They're cheap. Wow. Okay. That house must have blown the budget. There yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very fun story. Oh, chowder. Uh, we are moving on now to the games that we are playing. <clears throat> We were wondering last week, like, would we have any more Mario Wonder? We do. A little bit. We definitely yeah, do. Yeah, we did dabble like we said we would. Right, right. Yes. Uh, so you, last week, finished the game. Yes. I have now finished the game. Yeah. And I have just been doing uh, a couple things. So I have been going back, like I said I would, 
to the levels where I did not get all of the wonder seeds and trying to get all of those. Um, there's a good number of those. And then there's just like a lot of other secrets in the game yes. that I am trying to get at. And there is some post-game content that mm -hmm. I am, I know it's there. I'm trying to get those initial seeds first because I know the post-game stuff I've heard can be tricky. So that's gonna be kind of a focus, my energy on that. Yeah, so and you have to find a way to get to the post-game stuff. Yeah, I don't wanna spoil it, but I, I, was, I was a bit surprised that the game wasn't just like, hey, now do this. It was like- no, you still have to discover You still have to, things. to find the way to, to get to it, which was Right, and which that can take some time, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I am, um, now that I'm spending more time really methodically trying to find these things that I missed, like really appreciating the different routes that you can take through a lot more of the stages than I realized mm -hmm. in the first case. A lot case. of them have like secret exits, yeah. which is very Mario World, mm -hmm. which I love. I've been equi equipping the um, little sensor badge. Oh, that's a great idea, yeah. Because you can go to the map and sort of like deduce where a level might have a secret exit. Yeah and then put the sensor badge on and that's a good way for you to mm. like beep around and yeah. find yeah, yeah, yeah. where that could be. So I've been using that to discover some of those levels myself. Right, right. In the post game. Yeah, and I've also been um, checking out a little bit of the multiplayer. I have done a bit of it in person and a bit more, you know, we played it this weekend um, mm -hmm. online with a pretty big group of people. I thought that was more fun actually. With a bigger group of people you know yeah. that you're actually talking to IRL uh -huh. is actually okay. Yeah. Pretty fun. Yeah, yeah, because then you can like say like, oh, let's I'll go into this level. Like, let's do the little like race together. Right. Um, and it's a little bit more interactive than just having the little ghost, um, like a random. Ghost. Yeah, and you can actually have more people in those games than I realized. At first, oh, I was like, well, yeah. it's four people in a level, so that's how many people. But no, you can really pack that. And obviously, not everybody's doing the same course right. at the same time. But if you have like a group of, of friends, like that's a fun way to hang out. And, I like that part. You know, you can jump on voice chat and talk about like what you're doing or just like know that they're there. Yeah. Is fun. And yeah, the racing is is cool. That's that's a good addition. We did in my group of twelve, we did one of the wiggler race courses yeah. and we raced the wiggler and each other. And that oh. was super fun. Yeah. Yeah. Super, super fun. Like some so some of those like some of those moments, I think it was really great in the online multiplayer. And that was like the, the one application of that that I actually really liked. So hmm. I'm glad that we were able to try it out with people. The same system multiplayer, I'm, I'm becoming a bit more down on now mm -hmm. that I've played more. Yeah. Like the whole, I, I, I need to remember more about how New Super Mario Brothers did it, but the kind of switching off of the person who controls the camera is kind of an, an issue. It's like one person has the crown and they're like the main player. Right. And the crown can change depending on if you die or who gets the highest thing on the flagpole. Mm -hmm. So you do kind of need like somebody who knows what they're doing with to that. To, because you're basically in charge of progressing the, the camera through and the if game. you're the one that's running crazily, right. that just makes it not fun for everybody else. Because then those people end up turning into ghosts and if they don't get revived in five seconds, they die. Yeah. versus being in a bubble like New Super Mario Brothers had, mm -hmm. where you could just kind of stay in the bubble kind of indefinitely right. and try and, you know, yeah. get back to where those people were. Right, right. So I, I was like, did they, they probably, I'm sure they did consider something where the game zooms out probably it's a bit too more. Small. There were probably, you know, plenty of reasons for them not to do that. But yeah. the result is just like, mm, this is not as much fun as I thought it would be. Yeah. So I do, it's it's interesting. I do lean towards like, yeah, the online implementations are probably the better ways to do it because if somebody wants to run off, they can. Right, and, and it's not a big deal. you, but right. you can just kind of chill and do your own thing. Yeah. I do like, again, I think the only way the multiplayer co-op in person multiplayer is fun is if you play with just one person that is going at your pace. Yeah, you're, if you're very like like-minded. Yeah, like players. when we played together, that was fun. Yeah, but if you play yeah. with more than two people, you're very chaotic. It can be so chaotic, and you're right. If you are with someone that's just wearing the crown right. and running off, then you just you're gonna die. Right, um, right. So, so that's not fun. I saw some people saying like, "Well, surely they would have noticed this when they did their focus groups." Do you didn't know, friends? That there was no focus group. There is no focus group. When you're terrified of a leak, you're not doing any focus groups. <laughs> Focus groups. Focus group. Oh my lord. Yeah, I'm doing the same thing though. I am 
I don't need to play the multiplayer anymore, honestly. Like, yeah. I, don't, I don't need to I'm, play with anybody. I'm, I'm pretty, so I'm do, you, do you still have that, just like the, the general people in the background? Oh, I turned that off. Really? I don't like that. Oh, I really do like that. When I played some of the, the more difficult levels, it was actually a detriment to me. Because it's distracting? It was very distracting. Mm. And when I actually died and turned into a ghost, like, I couldn't find anyone to revive me. Oh, no. And so it was just causing the, the restart to be delayed, which was, I did not like that. So I just turned it all off. I really liked playing with our, like, Patreon friends. Um, that was great. But, yeah, I don't, I, I honestly, like, this is a single player game. <laughs> just play this game in single player because it's most fun that way. And I, I like just being by myself and poking around these levels and finding the secrets and, I found like even after I beat the game, and I I had gotten a lot of seeds. Like I found yeah. a bunch of a bunch of stuff that I missed, um, in in, a, in some of the worlds, and that's been really fun. Are you gonna hundred percent this game? I may be very close already, to be perfectly honest. I think. Yeah, I'm I don't know what the total number of seeds in the game is. Yeah, I, I, might I, be I very honestly close. don't know. Are you getting all the flagpoles? That's kind of where I draw the line of like, yeah, I kind of don't want to, I'm not going to do that. Like get to the top of the flag Yeah, because that's something they track. No, I don't care about that. That's a little Korok-y for that's me. That's very Korok-y. Yeah. I, I did get all the standees. Oh, good. Yeah. Um, those are cute. Yeah. Um, what else? Yeah. Like. Yeah, I think if I get all the seeds and, all the badges, and, obviously. and you know, find and play, you have that and find and play all the levels, like I'll, I'll feel very fulfilled. I think fulfilled. That's, that's very easy to do. That's mm -hmm. not going to be like a hard... Like, you need to just, like, look at a guide or something. You can just very naturally do that on right. your own. That's no problem. Right. Yeah. I have seen a lot of people, you know, coming out there with, like, oh, definitively, this is the best 2D Mario game since, and a lot of people say, like, since Super Mario World. World. And I would say that's, I mean, that, that sounds like a major accomplishment, but it's not... When I actually sit down to think about it, like that's not as as out there a thing to say right. as you might think. Because the new series. What was... have you actually had? Right. You, you had, had new... you had all the new Super Mario Brothers games. You had some right. Game Boy games. Right. Um, it's pretty much it. Yeah, so we're not counting so. 3D games. So yeah, yeah it, it it definitely is. It's a huge step up. You know, from where the, 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 new the harder games. debate is like between three world and this. Where would you put that? I'm still playing. I don't. I, I can't say. But yeah. it's definitely it's definitely up there. It's totally up there. Yeah, yeah, it's it's absolutely up there. And a lot of people have been complaining too that this game is way too short, that this game is this and that. I I don't mind honestly this type of ex game experience. Just again, I think we talk about this all the time. It's like I cannot play another one hundred hour game. Like I'm really glad that I was able to. I got a lot of joy playing this game over the launch weekend. I'm still you know, kind of dabbling around, like I'll pick it up every day, you know, look for a new level, do it, and then put it away and play another game. Like, I'm perfectly fine with that, this game being that kind of experience. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm not really bothered by it being a shorter game. Neither, and I don't think right. it speaks to the quality of the game at all. Not at all. So, so yeah, like I, I feel, I'm feeling pretty good. Like, I, I feel like I really like got a lot out of this game. And um, and I still continue to really enjoy it. We don't have this in our news, but I'll just say like the game does seem to be selling really well. Yeah, I think it's... Europe and Japan have put out updates. Nothing from NOA yet, which is yeah. interesting. They might be Europe? waiting for something like closer to like Black Friday, right? Yeah. Uh, the to momentum put out the, release. the momentum release, the Black Friday oh, momentum. Yeah. They're working on that momentum. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, it's like you know fastest selling. In Europe, really big number. I think it just passed Spider-Man Two in Europe as well, like this morning or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so it is still. So that's quite so well. that, yeah. That, but again, this game has such a broad. Audience. I mean, I'm, I'm not surprised, but no. And the install base of, of you get Switch that confirmation. Is huge. Yes. Right? So yeah. We have also both fully moved uh, on to Spider-Man Two. This is the game that I actually wanted to talk about because I am so instead of Mario. Yes. Because I'm, I'm like in the dabble mode with Mario. Wow. I have my attention. I'm the, I am dazzled, guys, oh. by Spider-Man 2. This is like, I don't know. Would you say it's a, would you say it's Amazing Spider-Man? Spectacular Spider-Man? the Amazing, Incredible, Spectacular <laughs> those are Those are the names of comics. Spider-Man 2. Those are names of I comics. I know, I know. Um, I really have fallen in love oh. with this game. Like, I... 
I knew I would love this game because I love the other Spider-Man Insomniac games so much. But there is something very special about this. I don't know how to describe it. I don't know what it is, but there's something that just really clicks with this game. And I was telling you that when I first started playing, like this is the, the game that has probably the best like sort of two hour intro or like mm. one hour intro into a game that I've ever played. Like the 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 way that you get pulled into this game with this big story. It's very moment. like God of War ish, actually. Yes, yes but but in like a more lighthearted, happy right. way. Right. Um the way that they feed the tutorial to you is so well done. Like I I'm honestly like these days, I'm terrified of the first two hours of the game. So I'm just like, I know what this is going to be. You're going to make me read a bunch of stuff. Yeah. I'm going to be trapped a lot of in some menu. I'm going to be like, yes, you're going to talk my ear off yeah, about that's something. that's a good point. I'm going to glaze over because it's going to be two hours of like you yammering to me. Yeah. And I just want you to shut up. But this game totally is the opposite of that. You still learn everything you need to learn. But it just like pulls you in. Um, so I thought that was just like super slick. Like I was like, this is good. Like I'm like, I'm feeling this, you know? And then, and then of course you just get like story moment after story moment. Pacing is excellent. You do these huge action sequences where you feel like your heart is going to like leap out of your chest because you're like holding your breath and your fingers are cramping from doing like the crazy, like, you know, fighting moves. And then you have these moments where you're just like walking around and like, chit-chatting to your childhood friend or whatever and like doing more like character stuff you know um doing more you know if you're playing as miles you're doing more like high school kid stuff you got apply to college and like things like that so like i feel like the pacing is so well done because it's like you don't feel bored but you also don't feel overwhelmed by like intense action all mm -hmm. the time yeah. so i'm super super into this game i'm loving it so far I'm like super intrigued with the story as well. And yeah, you've, you've also been, I think you're a little bit behind me, but yep. you're, you're going strong on this game as well. Yeah, this is a game that I think, I, I, would, I think we both were like kind of neutral going into it. Like we'd seen all the trailers, mm -hmm. we'd watch those and it was like, yes. this looks good, but I'm not like feeling the hype to much of an extent. Mm -hmm. But yeah, this game is really, really excellent. And in a way that has surprised me. Because again, like the quality of the last two games was so high, but they have seemed to have surpassed it in like every way. Yeah. And, and it's, it's kind of hard to pinpoint one thing of like, it oh, is. This, is, this is why this one's better. Yeah. It's just like all those Can't things they've, they've improved on. Yeah. And I agree, the pacing is great. Um, I'm really clicking with the, the combat more than I did in the last games. The combat feels so good. The combat is very layered. Yes. Like I think like, like this might be like a more... I might prefer this to like the new God of War games combat. Like there's just so much to do. And you think, oh God, fast. like, oh God of War is like, you know, the combat a, like master. a very hardcore, like, you know, combat focused game. But like, there's so many ways that you can do combat in this game. Yeah. It's quite remarkable. And because you're playing as Miles and Peter. Yeah, you have two different characters. You have two different characters. Right. And those characters are pretty nuanced. Like you're, you're still pressing generally the same buttons and there's some moves that overlap. But they just made it so that it feels different. And I still, again, I'm having a hard time like articulating what makes it feel different. Like there's something to Miles' this very sort of floaty quality that feels different to Peter's more like power. Mm. Um, and they, they do that somehow <laughs> in the combat, even though you're pressing the same buttons and doing similar moves. Like there's some specials that are different, obviously. But I don't know how they did it, but... I, Claps to you, kudos, because it, it does feel like very nuanced between the two characters. Right, right. Um, the story, like they're really going for it with the story and yeah, like it, it's excellent. very much like, you know, these people that, that these characters have these very close knit relationships with them and they're, mm -hmm. they're trying hard for these like emotional moments that somehow are like paid off. Totally like there's this one off. where like... Um, Peter and Harry, they like go back to their old high school and they go into the gym and they're like shooting hoops and it's like, you know, aim the thing to shoot the hoop and then this song plays like that Shin song. Like, <laughs> so first of all, I burst out laughing because I was like, I can't believe they went with this but song for this moment. Works. And then I was like, this actually kind of works. This is, this is hilarious. And then there's another one where 
those two and Mary Jane go to carnival? go to Coney Island. Oh, yeah, I love that. And it's like, yeah, there's part. things you need to do, but it's like we actually have like a whole carnival. You can go do those things, and there's like banter between the three of them. Yeah, and like memories which is very from their cool. childhood. Yeah, yeah, yeah and yeah. it's just it, it looks great. For, actually, this game looks incredible. This game it looks this is so one of the good. best looking games I think on the PS5. I can't stop looking at the suits. Like the, yeah, the, the, the texture of the suits, like wow. How do they make it glisten I don't like know. that? And all, and when you do like big battles, and yeah. your suit gets like ripped up, right, right. And you see like the the damage to the mm -hmm. suits and like the chunk. Battle of damage Spider Man. It's a great action figure. It looks so good. Yeah, I'm yeah. like sometimes I just stare at the screen like wow. Right. You, you get a lot of suits. Mm -hmm. so I'm, a, I'm a classic girl, so I'm always putting like Peter Parker in like the classic yeah. Spider-Man. I'm the Miles same way. is always in the black. Yeah, like. the, the majority <laughs> of the costumes, I really don't have much interest in. There's because a they're like, good classic. It's like I've read a lot of Spider-Man. Like I don't necessarily know what all these are, yeah, and I don't yeah. really want them. But yeah, variations on on those ones. You can I'm, do a I'm, lot. I'm all for those. Yeah, I will say. I, so you know, it's New York. You now have access to these new areas of New mm -hmm. York, which are cool. Um, I think it works better like a zoomed out version. Like if you go down on the street level, like it'll look good, but you'll notice like there's not a lot of like ambient sound. Mm. Like you'll see, so it, it, that's the thing that kind of puts me off is like it's so silent. You know, like New York is such a loud place. Like a bus, like you need an ambulance. It's, it's, it's very quiet. <laughs> ah, okay. Is, is something that I thought they could have done. I don't spend more much with. time on the ground to be to be perfectly honest. I, did, I have traveled. I was like, well, let's go <laughs> see like the Nintendo World Store. Like that could be fun to go oh, go see or like oh, certain little that. like that's landmarks that people have found. I do go to Central Park a lot. So people have found, um, uh, so the Daredevil, the law office that Daredevil has, yes. they found like, In oh, Hell's something Kitchen. changed there. And they asked oh, the director. The guy said. And he was teasing, like, yeah. oh, they're my, I was like, Whoa. Please. And Daredevil's my favorite DLC. superhero. So if they did something with Daredevil. Is there a Daredevil DLC coming? I don't know. Is I there? mean, I would love that. Again, I, I don't know, how, I don't have a clue how you make a Daredevil game, knowing who Daredevil is, but. Put it in the DLC. They should certainly try. Wow. That yeah. would be really cool. That would be, that would be and great. And then you have Kingpin. Oh. Kingpin is, is also a, is originally a Spider-Man villain. I always. So. There is good fan service in this game. Yeah, there was another thing that, that, that we were talking about this weekend where there's like a cameo of a, of a pretty classic, don't say who it is. I won't. You, you, you spoiled me before I got there. I'm sorry. Of a classic <laughs> Spider-Man character who... You think like, oh, is this going to be a major character in the game? But they're kind of in and out in like a half hour. I like that. And you you get like some updates from them along the way, but it's not the major thing right. that you they think. They do that it's. though. They like, do, no, that's cool. They also add like weird gameplay things in, like tied to these characters for yeah. like just that part right. of it. And like you think, oh, this is kind of fun. I kind of like. I mm -hmm. kind of like this. And then it's like, no, but this would be annoying if I had to do it for like thirty hours. Right. Right. You know right, what I mean? Right. Like. So it's good that they kind of give you like a vignette of, yeah. of that. Yeah. Um, I continue to like like the stuff in my ear, you know, like the little podcasts, yeah. phone calls right, from your right, character. Right. It's kind of GTA-ish. I love Whenever that. Whenever I play GTA, I... need I, the ambiance. This I, is like how I like live my life. I always go to the talk radio stations. I need the talk radio. So, yeah, yeah you want the like You want like the news updates. You want like... You want to talk to Genki. You want to talk to Mary mm. Jane. You want to talk to... You know, you just want them in your ear. Um... Yeah, it, it's well done in that way where it feels like it's just like things are like happening around you, yeah. you know? Are you doing much of the side missions? I did do the cat one that everyone's been talking about because oh. I really wanted to pet that cat. I like desperately <laughs> wanted to pet the cat. Um, but yeah, I've done some of the like the whatever the app when you go to the yeah. app and yeah. you like like help people. I've right. done a few of those. I actually really like some of the, just the environmental puzzles too. Mm. Like there's some that open up for you later in the game that you can do some like sort of puzzly things to get items or get like the tech parts to upgrade yeah. your suit. Right. Um, I will say the menu is a little bit complex. That's yeah. my critique of this game. There's, is that there is a lot going yeah, on. Yeah, when you in go into the menu, menu, there's a lot you can do. So you yeah. can buy new suits, you can buy new gadgets, you can use skill points mm -hmm. to get skills for shared skills mm -hmm. or individual skills for Peter Three skill or trips. Miles. There's a, what do they also call them? Towards like life upgrades, battle What do yeah. they call those? Just upgrades? I think it's upgrades. That's separate from all yeah. these other things. There's a suit upgrade. Suit upgrades, sorry. Yes. Yeah, so the, there's a lot that you kind of yeah. are constantly managing as far right. as your upgrades and abilities. Yeah. I was like a little overwhelmed, honestly. Yeah. I don't spend, I try not to spend too much time in there because I'm just like, I, I just want to get back to the game. But yeah. if you want to go deep 
and like really customize everything and all your stuff. Like you can you can really do that. And that's where like it's it's it may be a double edged sword depending on who's playing because like the combat, like I was saying, can get really nuanced. Right. But you can all I can also see it being like I'm pressing like three buttons at a time and I'm getting confused like with gymnastics. there's like too, there's like too much. Sometimes I do get confused. Because you also, now that you have like, you have a dodge and a parry. Yes. Which you have to use and depending on certain attacks. And there's also a parry jump for heavy attacks, which is really hard right, for me to do. Right, there's a, I always late. There's kind of a lot to keep track of. <laughs> yeah. But if you can keep track of it, it's, it's very it's rewarding. It's fun. And yeah. fun. And yeah. And you can combo them. Yeah, and you really feel like Spider-Man. Um, I think in, in more, most of, more so than you have in, in other games. Yes. The one other thing that, again, this le this kind of left a bad taste in my mouth when I first saw it in the video was the new Flight. wing I was so curious to ask you about because, that. Because, so in that first trailer, I came away from that thinking, oh, Spider-Man can just fly now. Like indefinitely. Because the, the world does have these little hoops that basically give you a boost. And the yeah. scene was just him constantly going through those right. and flying. And I thought, well, this... I don't this like Superman. this. This is Superman <laughs> this is who can Superman. do everything and is very boring as a result. Like, what can't Superman do? It's like, right. it's like I, Spider Man. We know he has this very set, contained set of abilities. And he also right. has some flaws. That's what makes him interesting. That's a good superhero, right? right? Yeah. It's like, so now if Spider Man can just do everything, then who cares? Yeah, you're invincible. That's but that's cool. not at all what this is. Like, yeah. it is just like a proper, like, it's like kind a of glider. Like, kind of like a Zelda esque. It's like a Zelda glider. Right. And yeah. um, it's useful in transitioning from web swinging. Oh. Into that gliding. Feeling, when you swing your web and you get to the apex of right. that swing and you let go and you do the glide to the next rooftop. Yeah. That is a magical or, feeling. Or you can like slingshot yourself off of a building and, yes. get, and go really fast and, right. and glide for and a pretty long the, time. You can do power jump yeah. as well. Yeah. And there are some things in the world where like there is like an updraft mm -hmm. that you can catch or yeah. something like that to extend it a right. little bit. Right, right, I always think I can make it across the river, like the Hudson. I'm oh. like, I can make it. And I'm like, no, I can't. <laughs> Immediately. So now I'm like smart. See, now I fly right next to the bridge. Yeah, so you I can, can swing, I can along, swing the along the bridge. Totally. Because I'm always going across the yeah. river. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I got smart because I, I definitely took a took a dip oh, <laughs> multiple gosh. times because I was like, oh, I'm not gonna make it. Yeah. Um yeah, this game is fantastic, honestly. Like I I can't wait to every day I can't wait to play, <laughs> which is a good sign. Yeah. Um, and I just yeah, I, I I'm I'm gonna be sad when I'm done with it. It's another good sign that you don't, you know, this game is so good. To the point of the fan service, like they do pull and the the, the previous games did this too, like they're really pulling from a lot of villains, which I think is good. Yes. And there's the main sort of ish. Like you, right. you guys all seen the trailer. Right, right. right. Yeah. But there's a lot of like smaller encounters or you'll just see them or they'll be mentioned. Mm -hmm. And it does remind you like, yeah, Spider-Man has some good villains. Where like that yes. that can be really make or break with these superhero things. Like it's a lame Where it's like, okay, the yeah. Avengers, like they don't have the best villains. Thanos? And I don't consider Thanos to oh. be to be traditionally an, an Avengers only. Uh, uh, he's like kind of an everybody's, everybody's he's like villain. a shared enemy for everybody shared, in the okay. Marvel universe. I guess, I guess you're right. And yeah, it's what like, are some Avengers? Villains? They have the Mandarin, who they have tried to oh, show, boring. and it get it starts to get like Iron Man's villains. Like that's why some of those later Iron Man movies got a little iffy. I, I feel it's yeah. like these, you don't really have. I, I can't really think of a villain. And a villain who can match Iron yeah. Man, but in this case, it's like these are all great villains who all have great stories, who all kind of mesh yeah. with Spider Man yeah, really well. Yeah. Right, so it's smart of them to do that. The yeah. stealth, we should talk about that. The stealth was a major like bummer for me in the previous Spider-Man games because you were forced into the stealth, right? And then if you don't do it the stealthy way, you like game over and just start. Oh, was the whole it? Was it an instant over. fail? You failed. Oh, I don't remember that. I did not like that. There was one mission that I did in Miles remember. Morales. In Miles Morales, where you were like in the shipyard, and I think I failed that mission like mm, three shipyard. or four times. Okay. And it was like really a bummer. Um, they definitely encourage you to stealth, but I don't do it. <laughs> but there, but there are some areas that are like. This is a stealth area. Yeah, yeah. And those are probably my, my least favorite. And they really like can break the believability. Because there was one I did where it was like a big room that probably had like 15 people in it. And you did have to stealth some of and them. And by the end, they were all hanging from the ceiling. <laughs> and, but none of their none of their friends like could could notice that, oh, there's a guy right there. Right? Yeah. So Spider-Man just they're just like, oh, what, what happened to it, Harry? It is, it is a little of a stretch. Yeah. Um, but I do, I mean, some of the stealth thing is like fun. You like hover, you do like little like web 
things yeah. to them. Like, sure. Whatever. I mean, these feel very much like the Batman Arkham stealth sections. Uh, but it was funny because Batman is like a stealthy character. That's true. And he is limited in his abilities, whereas Spider-Man, I never, I don't really yeah, think of him like, as a stealth just punch them. Like, character. Right? Yeah. He has super strength. He can, he can swing around. He can dodge anything. Right. So it's like... He's got the spidey senses. I... I'm curious to see in the end how many like real stealth segments there are. Yeah, if it's not too many, really then, then maybe it's fine. Many. But but yeah, uh, the photo mode. Incredible. Have you tried it? Yes. Yes, you got to try that. Incredible stuff. I, I should. So beautiful. I need to post. I've, I've taken a lot of shots. I need to post some. Yeah, they have a lot of filters. Really they have fun. that. They have that Game Boy camera, Game Boy camera filter. filter. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they beat Nintendo to a Game Boy camera filter. Oh. Burn. Actually, did Mario Odyssey have a? I think Mario Odyssey may have had a Game Boy camera ish. They have like a pixel, filter. pixel-y filter. Right, but this one's great, and it yeah. really, like, you can get some beautiful stuff. I mean, um, the lighting. If you can, I mean, the, the, the animation is so good, too. You can really nail, like, those, those, those like, poses. crazy Spider-Man poses. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, man, it's so good. So good. The um, last thing I'll say is um, you mentioned that, that interview about Daredevil, and so I, I actually know the game's uh, creative director, Brian Intihar, a little bit because he came up, he has a really interesting path, he came up in games media. Mm -hmm. So early in my career, I worked with him because he was at Electronic Gaming Get him on Monthly. This podcast. And he was kind of known as the sports guy. So he would play all the, he'd play Madden, play yeah, NBA, yeah. whatever. Oh, wow. And that was kind of his niche at the magazine. He was a super cool guy and a, and a really nice guy. But it's amazing to see this new echelon that he's taken this career to and for him. like leading these incredible games. So yeah, yeah, I just wanted to shout him out and say like, that's, that's super cool and really that's inspiring awesome. to see. Super cool. And like, he's like, he's really doing a great job on all these interviews they're putting him out on. Uh, kind yeah. Of teasing things in a very fun yeah, way. Exactly. While not giving up the secrets. And um, awesome. yeah, I mean, he's become just like a major star in the industry, which is so cool to see. That's so great. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. One more game to talk about. This one was unexpected. <laughs> Suica Game! Suica! What the heck is Suica Game? You paid $3 for Suica on Switch. I'm playing the free version because I'm cheap. <laughs> 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 okay, so this game is ridiculous. You told me about this game and I was like, what are you talking about? So this about? is like an out of nowhere phenomenon on the Switch. It is. So this is a puzzle game that is like at the top of the charts. And not for like shovelware. You look at it like this is shovelware. You think it is, it's but not. it isn't. It's not. So it's like a $3 game on the Switch. There is a web version that you've been playing that's yes, free. Yes, free. And it's not as pretty as a Switch version, obviously, but it is very, very good. It's a thing. puzzle game where basically you are dropping different types of round fruit mm -hmm. into like a big like container. A big container, yes. And when you match them, they combine. morph and combine and morph into the next big, there are different sizes, so they right. morph into the next so you biggest start size. with like a cherry and then like a strawberry and then right. it becomes like orange and like whatever. And the goal is to get to the watermelon. Watermelon, yeah. yes. The big honking right. watermelon. But the, the, the interesting thing about this game is because the fruits are round, mm -hmm. they behave in a really weird yeah, there's way. There's like a physics thing that happens. In this jar. So like, yes, you want them to be bigger because then you get more points at the end and there's like a kind of a cap line once you yeah. go over the cap the game is over or that turn is so what over. happens when you get watermelon is it like do you win um you keep so going you keep going but right. your your tub is pretty full because that watermelon is okay. so big so all the fruits so kind you just of have around to try it. and but then you once it bursts at the very end you get like tons of points what, what if you do double watermelon what happens then? i don't think you can fit two watermelons in there oh wow. i don't think i've ever seen that okay if, if anyone has double watermelon and know what happens, tell I'm us. I'm sure somebody I have, has. I've, I've only gotten one Are water you at the top of the leaderboards? No. My highest score was like 2230. Okay. Which is pretty decent. But the, the thing that's weird about it too is that, the, that they bounce off each other. It's kind of like um like balloons or like beach balls. Right. So the physics of it is is really interesting. I think that that's what make this, makes this game unique because there's lots of like sort of match theory combine whatever puzzle games, but because it's like circular, um, it just like makes it feel different, I guess. And yeah, you kind of feel like, well, if I drop it here, I can knock this thing over. Or like it rolls and, into right. the, if, it, if this rolls down here, it's gonna become this fruit and I already have that fruit stacked or there. there. Or there's this other so thing that can happen where it's like, if I just wait five seconds, like something's gonna happen. 
I wish that there was like a tilt. Oh, tilt it or shake it or something? I'm like shaking my phone, like, come on! Because that would be really funny, right? They yeah. should add that in, like a tilt thing. Would that get you to buy the Switch version? Yes. $3. $3! It's only $3, Not my bad. gosh. I like playing on my phone because I always have my phone. So it's a web version that works on the phone. Yeah. And when you're doing that, you're doing touch? Yeah. That's cool. It's great. And it's- and It's it, free. Is it oriented for vertical or- Vertical. Wow. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. I should check that, I haven't checked that out. It's literally called Suikagame.com. So you just search for Suikagame and you can yeah. get that. Suikagame.com, yeah. They did have- You have I, to watch ads though. Oh, okay. I mean, you, there's a banner out of the bottom. That's it. <gasps> they did have a Halloween skin, mm -hmm. which was a nice little bonus. Was I didn't- pumpkins? I mean, for a, Did you not do this? No. Oh, they didn't have that? No. Oh, I should have shown you. Yes, it was um, it cool? a Halloween theme and skin that had wow. different music. All of the fruits were a little different and they had kind of more like spooky looks on their faces. Okay. And I think you eventually wanted to become a pumpkin instead of a- A watermelon. A watermelon. Okay, a pumpkin and a watermelon. So I, I wonder, are they gonna do like an, they, they do like a do holiday Christmas? update or- Do you become turkeys? I don't know. But you become a partridge in a pear tree, I don't know. A pear tree. But that was a fun extra thing that you don't have to do for a $3 game that was a nice touch. There you go. I appreciated that. $3 so on Switch. This is the game that the is Halloween sweeping version. the world. Check it out. Goaty. Suica game. It's gonna be a goaty. It's gonna beat Tears of the Kingdom and become. Well, it is a new kind of puzzle genre. I mean, you, again, normally with puzzles, you have blocks and you put them down and they stay there. Yes. This? Or they combine, like a Candy Crush, where you combine yeah. some stuff together. I can't, I can't think of many other puzzle games where there's this like spherical element and, and you the can- And bouncing. And you can manipulate it. A little bit. You think you can more than you actually can. You can in the beginning, because it's like, you got yeah, a lot of room in that right, jar. Right, right, right. But then like, then once you get, the jar gets filled up, it's a little bit harder to manipulate. Yeah, so there is, I mean, it is like, it's legitimately good puzzle game yeah. and also like legitimately novel again of like I haven't really played a puzzle game yeah. that's like I've been playing this. every day. So it's 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 legit good. It's three dollars. Yeah. Which is too much for you. But keep watching the I thought it was shovelware, honestly. Like I was like very skeptical. I was like, this is definitely shovelware. Keep watching them ads. Uh, speaking of ads, this is normally where we put an ad, but we don't have a second ad for today. So we wanted to give you all an update on a topic that many of you have been asking about, which is our Japan trip. Thermometer insert now. The thermometer is back. So we took a little bit of a break with the Japan trip because we had some other things on going on and we had a big idea about how to accelerate things a little bit with our Japan trip. So you may recall that we did the Kit yes. and Krista controller uh, in partnership with Captain Alex. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, now all of those are out to the great people who bought those. So we are reinvesting. All of that funding. The funding from the Kit and Krista controller and putting it straight into our Japan trip fund. Which makes us. And we have rocketed to, to here. To a very close number to where we need to be. So we are now, boom, in the home stretch. Uh, this is absolutely something that we're gonna do next year. Yes. Not, not time to squeeze it in this year. No. But, also, yes. Also, it's very cold in Japan now, I don't wanna go. It's gonna be freezing, <laughs> yes. So, it's something that we are gonna work towards again uh, for that last stretch. If anybody would like to do, you know, a super chat when we're doing a live stream or a super thanks, those are gonna go straight, 100% of those go mm -hmm. straight into this. Yes, but, we will continue to update you via the thermometer. Yes. But we're, we're, we're ready to go. Right. We're in the home stretch. We're right. gonna get there, people. Right. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you it's everybody awesome. who has contributed. Thank you everybody who got a kit and Krista control or helping us get a little bit closer to yeah. that. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be an exciting thing for 2024. Yeah, it's gonna be exciting for 2024. We can't wait to go to Japan and just share tons of stories from when we were in Japan multiple, multiple times with Nintendo and create all sorts of amazing content for you. All right. Okay. News time. Oh, we're really coming down from the high of Spider-Man Suica to this really this unfortunate is fairly, news. This is a fairly full news update. Let's start with uh, a Nintendo story. So they, out of the blue, posted these new tournament guidelines, Boo. which uh, people are not liking, and they kind of give some new official structure and guidelines and rules around how Nintendo wants people to hold 
you know, their community tournaments. Mm -hmm. So some of these guidelines include capping the tournaments at 200 people, capping any cash prizes at $5,000, not having sponsors. Obviously, you can't use modified mm -hmm. version of games. And you can't even, like, sell merch or, or even food. <laughs> like, so Starve to death. So, tournament. you know, it, it's definitely something where they're trying to you know, have control over how these things happen. I wonder, like, why did they feel the need to do this? Because this is such a, like, gray area of things that fans are doing on their own. These are not, in most cases, massive, massive... Events. They're very events grass, or tournaments, community-based events. The big, massive events Nintendo is in direct contact, contact with. with. Yeah, like the Evos of the world, And they're right? you know, helping to shape their involvement And they do have those. licenses. And right, right. So yeah, that was the other thing. Is like, well, if you want to not have to, you know, if you want to do something else beyond these, like get a license. Get a license, was, which is was extremely difficult to do. You ain't getting a license. <laughs> Let me tell you. I'm here to tell you, you're not getting a license. Yeah. That's so why do you think they did this? To do. Out of the blue again. What was the point of this? This is just weird to me. It's like, why would you poke the bear kind of thing when there's no need to? Yeah. Because there must be a need. <laughs> there must be something coming up from the Nintendo competitive team where they are wanting to either do their own, some sort of their own series of community-based smaller events. They want those to be legitimate and the only ones available um, and for people to participate in the official capacity. Um, but there, there's definitely something else besides the fact that they're not doing this just to piss you off. You know what I mean? Like there's something behind this. And I think it goes back to sort of the future of this like very shaky competitive team that Nintendo has, um, that they're trying to do something, but just really having a hard time getting things under control and... I mean, what year, what year are we into this initiative? Oh like, it, it's at least five years. I was going to say six years. Yeah, yeah, right. We were there and, when it started. And congratulations, now you've kneecapped whatever official thing to take the place of this that you've exactly. already done because now people are mad and people are going to be out to, exactly. to get those things. Like, I saw, like, Hungrybox was out there. Like, he does a tournament that would fall under these rules. And right. he's basically, like, calling the bluff. He's like, I'm moving forward. You, you, sue me if you want to sue me. And yeah, I mean, there's a, there's a lot of them. It's like a game of whack-a-mole. Like, can you really control all of them? Right, I don't that's think the thing. You can. It's like nobody, you don't have to. Like, oh, I'm doing a tournament. It's like just do it. They're probably not going to find you just out. Just about do it. it. Like, or it's like, well, I did. I didn't even know that this was a thing. I was mm -hmm. not reading. I was. I did not have it locked to Nintendo.com. Yeah, you can just claim ignorance. Right. Really, like I didn't see it. Sorry. Right. So, like, what do they do in that case? What is their? Yeah. What What's is the point? Yeah. What is their? Um, like enforcement ability and, and again and procedure. I, I went because we did we did a a big smash competitive smash episode earlier this year, and I went yeah. back to that, and it was like you know kind of the same stuff. It, really, it, it's a, it, that was a different circumstance. I can't remember what it was that that triggered that, but it's the same question of like right. why, why are you in this? Should you still be in this, or should you just punch out? Because you're not really contributing right. anything to this community. Mm -hmm. You are agitating. This community, which is made up of Nintendo fans. Yeah, and people that buy those games. What, yeah. What, what are you, what is what the is benefit the of this? What is the right? point? Is the I point? don't know. Yeah, but that is what, that is why though, is that there, there's going to be some official something that they're planning that they, they don't want to coexist with these fan things. They do not like it when official Nintendo things get confused with non-official right. Nintendo things on a broad level. They do not like that. That is like one thing that is like very triggering for Nintendo is if anything that's unofficial is confused with something that is official. So I think that's what this is. Yes, but I mean, it's stupid, this is something that's, that's impossible to 100% enforce. You don't have the means or the, frankly, the resources to like scour the ends of the earth for a smash tournament in somebody's garage and shut it down. Right. I just, I just don't understand it. And at some point, you need to have something positive to show for this big initiative instead of just agitating your biggest fans. Yeah. I don't get it. I agree. I do not get it. I think it's really dumb. I don't know why they continue to push when it clearly is not working. Yeah. So, yeah. Whatever. We YP. Have, 
a big uh, Xbox reorg as they head into this new larger yes. Xbox team where Lots it's going to integrate um, yeah. Activision folks. And it's a good time to do that because the, you know they're going to be getting bigger. Phil Spencer has talked pretty openly about some of the shortcomings they had right. before of, of you know being a hub of all of these new teams and developers that mm -hmm. were previously not Xbox teams and developers. So I think it's a great time to do it. So there's a lot. There's a lot here. Yeah. Um, you may not care about the uh, corporate vice president of human resources. I was going to say the HR person may not be your your top of mind here. But, but I think there's I think there's two, finance. I think there's two people here that are you know getting a, a very significant boost in their roles. Mm -hmm. So uh, Matt Booty, great name by the way. He is now the president of game content and studios. Yeah. So kind of in charge of you know all game software. He, he's basically like the Mr. Takahashi of, of Xbox, of, if, of if, Xbox. If people need yeah. a comparison point, that's what Mr. Takahashi does uh, at Nintendo. He's in charge of, of all you know software. Content and studios. E yeah. Exactly. And then Sarah Bond is now the president of Xbox. Yeah. And she is in charge of a lot of things, including devices, player and creator experiences, platform engineering, strategy, business planning, data and analytics, and business development. Wow, oh, that's a lot. She's going to be really wow. busy. Hopefully she has a big team under her. <laughs> and Phil Spencer remains just the CEO, the big boss, doing boss stuff at the yes. top. And there's a lot of people, you know, you got like the CMO and the COO mm -hmm. and, and, and stuff like that. Bobby Kotick's here, but his days are numbered, presumably. Yep. End of 2023, right? Right. So yep. he's literally got like two months to go. Mm -hmm. So we did our big, you know, most important people in games episode. I we'll have to do it. Was that around the start of the year? Or yeah. Earlier in Might the year. Might have to redo. And when we were doing our research, we came across Sarah Bond and we asked ourselves, should she be on the list? Honestly, she had a bit of a confusing title. Yeah, yeah and title. Yeah. Whereas like, I'm, she seems she was like to, the VP of something. She seemed to be Phil Spencer's like right hand person. Like whenever yeah. there's an event, like they are together, right? And it's like you are an extension of me in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. So it's like you have a you had a very important role, but I didn't completely understand the scope. Now I understand the scope, yeah. and, and I think you, you belong, belong on the, on the list. I think you belong on the list. Yeah, you, someone's <laughs> well. Um, uh, epic person that retires. Bump him. Put her on. Oh, Donald Mustard. Donald Mustard. Yes. See ya. <laughs> <laughs> Donald Mustard got Colonel Mustard and, and he's off the list <laughs> and, with the, with the, with the, the, the candlestick, candlestick yeah. in the library. <laughs> so now we're going to add Sarah Bond. Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, that's that's just a massive... I mean, devices. I mean, that's hardware. You're in charge of hardware. Yeah. In addition to these like eight other, other things. Other really important so, things, yeah. Yeah, I mean, um, you know, hopefully she has, and I'm sure she does at Microsoft, have just like a massive team supporting that, but that that is a lot to it's put lot on to um, a single person. Yeah, but I'm sure she's very capable. So, yeah, yeah, that's, uh, and you know, I'm sure Phil will continue to be mostly, you know, the face of yeah. Xbox, and, and he's, you know, Great. signing off on all that stuff, and he gets the fun job of dealing with like uh, Satya Nadella, who's the actual CEO of overall Microsoft. Kind of let let yeah. these teams, you know, do the work, work and, with their own team. Yeah, exactly. Right, right. Yeah. Another Nintendo story. There are new Nintendo patents, and you were really ringing my bell. We got to get this in the news. Oh no, no, I was just wondering if you what you, what you wanted to talk about patents in well, general, and then there's the always things. patents. Yeah. So these patents are there's a couple. So there is one thing that looks like a 3ds, yeah. but it has sort of a dual screen. Basically, you can break. It in half, right? And have a controller with a screen and a detachable screen, right? So that that was something that got mm -hmm. people talking, people wondering, like, oh, is this what the Switch Two is going to be? Right. I don't think it's necessarily going to no. be a 3DS. Yeah. Uh, obviously, you have to include a visual. You can, you know, kind of fudge that if you needed to. Right. I think our takeaway on this is like Nintendo is constantly filing. That was my point. Patents. That's why I wanted to include this because there's so many stories about like, is this going to be the Switch Two? Right. But let's let's come back to Earth, people. Nintendo is literally constantly filing patents just so they have it. Right. Yeah. They, I, I, somebody should go back and like track. Like, did this ever become a thing? Was this ever used in a Nintendo product? Yeah. And you know, as a big company, it's just kind of like due diligence of well, this is something we could be interested in, so let's cover our bases exactly and have it right. Versus and yes, this is the thing. Really annoying. 
Right. So you really want to get ahead of it anyway. So yeah. But of course, yeah. Whenever you file a patent, it becomes public information. Mm -hmm. So people like to chit chat about it. But I, I don't think this is indicative. I mean, it doesn't rule it out. Obviously, it's always a chance. But it's not like just because they filed a patent that this is going to be the design for Switch Two. Yeah, it's good fodder for the rumor mill and mm -hmm. you know channels that kind of trade in that kind of stuff. But yeah, I think we've seen enough of these where it's like, yo, yeah. So, so yeah. <laughs> it doesn't really mean much exactly. to us. Exactly. Yeah. Last thing was this uh, Five Nights at Freddy's movie, which made a ton of money over the weekend. Oh my goodness, it did. It earned $39.5 million, which makes it the biggest domestic opening day ever, larger than the Mario movie. Mm -hmm. Wow. Good timing, obviously. Uh, you are our resident Five Night at Freddy's expert. Ooh. What do you have to say about this? This image is scary. <laughs> you can look at it. I'm not going to look anymore. I scroll past it. Um, man, video game movies really having a boon here. Um, this is another one that got like terrible critic reviews, but did it matter at all because it made a ton of money and the people that went to go see it seemed to have loved it. People that are fans of Five Nights at Freddy's yeah, more seem so, to love it, right? I think the Mario movie was at like 50-ish percent Rotten yeah. Tomatoes, and this was like 20s. It was bad. So it yeah. was it was really low. But yeah, if you, I don't think anybody who's a fan of Five Nights at Freddy's cares or is even looking Just at like Rotten Tomatoes. Just like people that were fans of the Mario movie cared. Right, was right. Looking. I think the Mario movie is more like multi-generational. Sure. Where it's like, you know, we didn't grow up playing Five Nights at Freddy's. Like well, people, somebody like, did. Well, we, you, and, you and I. Oh, you and I. Right. Okay, yeah. Like people in our generation, like... Um, you know, people people are growing up with Five Nights at Freddy's now. Yeah, yeah. So There's a big audience for that now. Yeah. Yeah, I think you know this. I, I do worry of like when video games become the next big movie trend. Like, what kind of mistakes are these studios going to make? Kind of like they did with comic books. Mm -hmm. Like oversaturating. Even it, the companies. Watering it down. Like Marvel made their own mistakes. It's like we did this. We made this big. Oh, now we're going to totally step in a total, you know, quagmire. Well. It's the multiverse. So it's just, it don't make video game multiverse. I need no more multiverse stories in literally anything ever again. Thank it's you very confusing. much. I really don't like it's those. Really confusing. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm glad to see it. People that are fans of this of this franchise seem to love it. Um, I am too scared to watch this movie or play this game. So I, I mean, I'm this not is going to this is a it. game about jump scares. So it's not for me. And it's also scary, like puppet animals. It's Halloween though. It is Halloween. It is Halloween. It's good timing. I'm scared. I'm already scared. Yeah, yeah. Um, as far as upcoming, they just announced also another Sonic movie. I think yes. it's coming at the end of 2024, mm -hmm. I believe. I mean, those have done great, so I'm sure this one will continue yeah. to do great. There's got to be a sequel to that Mario movie coming up soon. Right, there's that. Yeah. And yeah, I think, I think it's just, you know... Movie execs like bring me the video game bring properties. me your ten hottest video game properties bring and, and we'll hottest. we'll pick five and we'll do these exactly so yeah good yeah. do it but do it well please yes yeah questions we have some great questions <clears throat> from our Patreon community that's where we get all these questions every week our first one we've still got some Halloween names on here Fridge Mictor that's Vidge Mictor I know that. How do you react when you watch someone play video games and they appear to be extremely clueless in what they have to do despite going through a tutorial? Back in college, one person began to play Dr. Mario in the rec area and a few classmates and I began to watch in horror as they tried to play it like Tetris. They had quite a few people getting incredibly frustrated with them, myself included. Oh my. I worry that I am that person. Oh. That's why I'm scared to play oh, games on stream. Oh no. Let me do I it. I feel like you guys are going to be mad and frustrated. Well, we so so this happened on our stream, the one we did last night, where you had to spell the word, and they <laughs> the so password. So there's it was a six letter word, and there were two rows of three blocks. You kept getting confused, and you had to hit it. So the the blocks were numbered, and the first ones were one two three. So I just assumed it was one two three, and then it would start with the same sequence. Four, five, six. No. no, it went in like four, five, six. It's a circle. It made a circle. It was clockwise. And I kept, I did it like three times. I was like, "What am I doing wrong?" And every in the chat was like, "Dummy, you <laughs> you're doing it wrong." A dummy. <laughs> okay. First was, of all, you couldn't guess the password. You I was after like, six. I, did, hits, I didn't care. You couldn't do it. I, did, I, I just needed. You were very slow to just give it to me. I, I was like, I, "She's got to be on Game Facts. She's got to have this ready. Have it queued no, up." No, they knew it. They, they were going to give it to you. Text me. Send it. 
Telepathically? Yes. Zzz. I could have faked that I knew it. I could just like look at my phone like, oh, I know now. Oh, uh, I didn't think to do that. Yeah. <laughs> I was trying to guess it too. I was like, what is it? Um, I am very lenient with people that play games. Mm -hmm. I do not like to backseat driver them because I don't like it when people do that to me. And again, I just, yeah, like... There was one time where I was playing a boss battle and someone tried to backseat gamer me and I got really mad. Like, like it really it caused a big, big fight. Like, really big. I think I cried. <laughs> Reggie, why'd you do it? God, Reggie, you're so fake. <laughs> it wasn't Reggie. It wasn't you. <laughs> like, I, I don't know. Like, I think you guys would hate the way, I mean, I don't, again, we're gonna start streaming games more. Hate what? I feel like people are gonna hate the way I play games because I, uh, I am kind of clueless. Well, I mean, we've seen it. There's, but in, not enough. We have life. eight years of, of footage. We've seen it. <laughs> <laughs> we know. Not those kinds. The Nintendo games are okay. Oh. But like, I don't know if you guys want to see me play Elden Ring like that. Oh, you have seen you it. You beat Elden Ring. You have seen me play Elden you Ring. You beat on this it. Channel, you did great. I don't know. I get a little self conscious, so I'm yeah. not. I'm not gonna get mad. I, I do think that if they are, if you, if they're like. Continue. This is just don't know how to play Dr. Mario like first time. Okay, fine. But like. Well, something. So something that I always liked for us was we were not positioned as the game, game experts, experts in the treehouse. Expert. It's like that's the treehouse's problem yeah. to play everything flawlessly and perfectly. It's I like can't we're do just that. two regular people. I'm a dummy who suck at that. these things. Yeah. And like. We're just hopefully, like hopefully that's relatable. Else. Of like, yeah. yeah, we're just bumbling through this like everybody. Yeah, else. I mean, some of you are very, very skilled. Right, many of you are not bumbling. Video but, games, but and you're are. not bumbling, and 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 you're awesome. Um, but that's not us. I do feel, find find that as I play more games, I have improved quite a bit. So I'd I do feel so. I do feel better about like my platforming skills have gotten way better. I was playing some of the the hard Mario Wonder like five star levels, and I was like. I can kind of do this now. Yeah. Like, I'm not that bad, yeah. you know? So I, there is improvement. I'm also very lenient when it comes to people who are not experienced, where I get a little, there, there are two things that can set me off. Uh-oh. One, do one is menus, where it's like me playing like a co-op game, and it's like both, both people have to press a button. And like, oh, I press, press it, it, and then it. the other person's just like staring at the screen, like, press a button. Can you press A, please? Can you please press the button? Press A. Press any button. Press the button! <laughs> <laughs> and the person's just like, huh? Button? The other one, and this is this is always like a bad omen when you need to like do any sort of controller management. Where it's like, okay, now I'm gonna go into the switch menu and we need to sync all of our controllers in the right order. Oh. And it's like, I'll be player one, because again, I need to navigate these menus that you don't know. And it's like, Bleh. It's like first, like, okay, here we go. And, like, mm. and now we're in a menu and I'm telling you, press a button. Could you press the button? That is like, it, it, this justifies a next generation of hardware. That whole controller. Sinking. If you can, if you can make that user friendly and easy. How do you do that? Sense, sense, AI. I don't, I don't know. We've been doing video yeah, games for, for 50 years or something. We can't that figure it out. That person definitely is, a, is the crown winner. Those are the two things where I can, I can get a little cranky. Oh. I don't think I've ever done that to you. But the game, maybe the game shouldn't put that on all the, just have one person press be in charge button. of Because I would be glad to do this for everybody. I would be glad to press the button. I got this. So you're not ready. Right, because if, if you're playing if multiplayer. you're like going to the bathroom and you're not ready yet. If you're playing you know, uh, multiplayer with somebody who hasn't played that game before, like they don't know what to do. Right. So just let me do it. Yeah. Chris yes. Pratt. Yes, yes. Oh, I get it. It's Chris, Chris Pratt, and the picture is Chris Pratt. Pratt. <laughs> but he's also shirtless and well, wearing a Mario That looks hat. like uh, Guardians of the body. Galaxy. That's not his body. It absolutely is his body. Hashtag fake body. No. Oh, that is his body? That's okay, him. anyways. You can investigate that on your own time later. Okay. Uh, it's not exactly a shock that with video games becoming more and more mainstream that companies don't have to try as hard to reach out and convince people to get their consoles and keep them happy. That being said, we've been seeing the downturn in quality of video game company rewards programs, namely My Nintendo, as that's what I'm familiar with. My question to you is when do you believe the My Nintendo slash Club Nintendo program peaked and what was the coolest rewards you saw go out the door? Mm. Yeah, that's true. I guess like the physical rewards is, is very difficult nowadays that we live in a very digital kind of yeah. world and, and it's just hard to like ship stuff, you know? 
It's expensive. Um, and very expensive. Right. And it's just, it, it's tough for companies to keep up with something like that. Um, I think that Club Nintendo probably peaked, like, in the Wii years, late Wii, yeah, was because desperation the place has set in to be, yeah, desperate. <laughs> they had some really cool stuff. So really there are did. three things that come to mind for me. Okay, first is that Mario pin set. That was it a was good like it was stuff. like this by big. It was like five rows yeah. of pins, and it came arranged looking like eight bit Mario. It was cool. So cool. Yeah, that was, I, that was that was some controversial I have stuff though. The other thing, why was it controversial? Because they, like, they ran out and people were mad. That was something else. You're thinking oh, of something else. Oh, those different pins. Correct. You're thinking of the more recent Mario Anniversary pins. That's right. That's a different we pin. We didn't run out of those 8-bit pins? Well, you needed to have like a lot. It was a, a lot, lot of, points. of points to get it. Right. So I think you, know, you needed to really you were, you be on save, your game to get it. Saving your points Right, here. right. Okay. Save those old pamphlets, remember? The pamphlets, you yes. You need those pamphlets. Yes. I would steal the pamphlets out of the games at our office to get more points. We had a lot of ways to work on this. <laughs> two other things. They did two like awesome statues. They did a Luigi's Mansion That's statue. Right. And then they did a kind of like Mario family. It was like, you know, Bowser, Mario, Luigi, oh, yeah. Toad, Peach. They were like, it was, like it was round. Very um size, good size yes. too. It was like, yeah, it was like fit it like in the palm of like your you have that of too. a big I have those. Those were so well done and so and I was like, oh my gosh. Where are those at home? I have the probably around here. It's like you can get that from this program. Oh my god! <laughs> like, those were so the good. Those were so the good. Legit collectibles. And this was also pre Amiibo, so like again, seeing like yeah, physical, physical depictions of these things. Mm, like, oh, I just, don't, I just don't have many of those. Right. So yeah, I agree. The the offerings now are a little lackluster. You're looking at you see something out of the corner of no, your eye. No, I'm thinking about my Animal Crossing fan. I really like that Animal oh, Crossing yeah. fan. Oh yeah, that's cool. That was so nice. It was like the height of summer. Do you still have that? Yeah. Okay. I was looking at that. Yeah, yeah. So now there's just not, again, like they, they want to be careful about how much they spend on this stuff. Yeah. There's, there's prob they probably, like, there's enough people who are happy with something digital. Yeah. You still so. can get some cool stuff. Like there was the, um, the My <laughs> Nintendo Yoshi teacup in Australia oh. that one of our Patreon um, folks had that I was very jealous of. Oh, I might have missed that. So Oh, that's cute. cool. Maybe they, I can, like, convince someone to get They do it now also have the store that does have, you know, some unique or exclusive things yeah. where it's like, I'm just glad to pay money to get it. Uh, exactly. And they have, they have the, the, the really nice, like, Tokyo Nintendo store. Right, but also, Kyoto. like, they had that um, Animal Crossing Brewster, like, all the coffee stuff. Oh, yeah, we got every single one I, of I cleaned that out. <laughs> I also bought you, like, <laughs> yeah. all the clothes. Like, literally all like, of them. Like, that was, that, that was a really cool thing. I really uh, like that. That you just buy. So cute. Yeah. yeah. It's like, just, just, Make it available somewhere or another. And I also have the Animal Crossing apron and the um, the, uh, the, the from, oven mitt from, from Tokyo the store. Right from Tokyo. So I, more home goods is what we need. Okay, Ferilio asks, tech company Ioneo. Hopefully, I said that right. Is working on a handheld system called the Ioneo Flip DS, which looks remarkably similar to the Nintendo DS. How do you think Nintendo is handling this, and what will their next steps be? If you are a audio listener. There are some, you know, non-Nintendo systems that, frankly, they just look like a, like a 3DS, and one of them seems to have keyboard. like a little keyboard thing yeah. on it. So I've been seeing this whole category of product a lot more recently. Yeah. Of like, like handheld emulation-based mm -hmm. systems. There's like the analog Game Boy. Well, there's that, but the there's analog pocket. There's a lot of these other ones that seem to be like coming out of China, where there's like companies like this. Where it's like, oh, it looks like a Game Boy, but you can load up all your games, mm -hmm. or it looks like this or that. Like people like um, like uh, Wolf Den, our friend Bob Wolf, like he seems very He's into like tuned into, this. into that. Or he when, knows like what's good and what's right. Not. And when I was um, when I first got my Steam Deck and I was looking at things for that, like that was a very like a lot of those channels also talked about devices like this. Mm -hmm. So obviously, Nintendo is not happy with this but i you know i suspect there's some legal path that they're taking where it's like hey we're not telling you how to get this stuff this is just a device so you can use it for whatever you want wink right. wink you know right there's right. probably some angle like that that they're approaching where nintendo's limited in what they can actually do but wink wink <laughs> yeah it's pretty hard to i think Sort of snub out these things because it's true like there's so many devices that are you can 
you, the consumer, can do whatever you want, but it's not like the company is like making it. That's not the product, you know. Right. The project is not for you to emulate games. Right. It's just a a device. Um, yeah, in terms of the form factor, it looks obviously very similar to a 3DS, but I, I'm sure that they have changed it up enough so that it's not stepping on a patent um, right. or anything like that. And, and I'm sure there's so many loopholes in that realm um, that they're probably fine. Yeah. Do you think the fact that a lot of these companies are in China gives them, like, if Nintendo wanted to sue a company in China, would that be harder to do than, like, sure. made in America? i I'm sure. I don't know, but I feel like it would be. Yeah, that that must be the legal, like guardrails around that must be really different. Yeah. Then and they don't probably don't have like things like right because you always hear like oh like the U.S. Patent. doing business in China is different from doing business like anywhere literally else anywhere in else in the world. Yeah, anywhere else in the world. Right. They. So that probably that rules. probably extends to suing somebody in China is different than suing or somebody. How do you I mean they probably can just pop up another company right away on right. a different name and right. sell it again. Yeah. Like, how are you going to stop them? So they probably don't even bother, right? Yeah, I yeah. don't know. Ninja11 asks, does Nintendo time certain smaller announcements to distract us from a PR disaster? They announced Mario Party 3 on NSO shortly after they announced their plan to ruin the Smash scene again. They did something like this last time, too. No. Uh, you might think so, but no. They don't care. They don't, they don't do this. <laughs> they're very confident in their decisions. They'll, I mean, yeah. they know that this might not be popular. But, but they don't care. They don't care. <laughs> They'll live with it. They know that things will eventually die down. Yeah. And they know that they have another game in the hopper that will distract you always. Yeah. And in the case of Mario Party, I mean, they just have a lot of news to get out. So sometimes it's just like, stack them up. We got to get this out. <laughs> Especially with the NSO stuff, because it's on like that ridiculous schedule that no right. one knows about not even them right right so they're just like they don't they're not they, those, those teams probably aren't even honestly talking to each other right they're probably just like oh well i didn't know you guys made an announcement about the totally. smash community totally. oh sorry <laughs> posse pace posse pace won the costume contest he did. at He's our wearing a meetup amazing tears of the kingdom costume that's right I had a question about the new 3DS. Nintendo usually announces new hardware worldwide, but on August 29th, 2014, they announced the new new 3DS in a Japan-only Nintendo Direct. We know the reasons why this initially was a Japan-only product, but I was wondering, was the North American marketing team surprised by this? Did they wake up to find a new product was announced that they were not expecting that day? Either way, what was it like dealing with the fans and press for this rare product announcement that it wasn't intended for your market? So yeah, a few weeks ago, we answered a question about why wasn't that base new 3DS available until later in right. the US. So the question here is like, was anybody surprised mm -hmm. by the Japan announcement? Right. The answer is no. No, yeah. You know, by the time we were really, you know, going with Nintendo Direct, like that was a good means of, of unifying all the regions and making sure that people knew mm -hmm. everything that was going on. So there was never a case where Japan was going out with like a major announcement not going rogue that nobody anything. knew. I mean, there yeah. were some things that were extremely confidential that not a lot of people knew about. But the important but, people that needed to know definitely yeah, every, knew. Yeah, like somebody who needed to know would know. Yeah. Um, I do, I mean, there are like notorious stories of like gaming history where like I think... Um, Sega had a couple where like they were, in, Sega of America yeah. was making the 32X and then Sega of Japan was like, hey, here's the Saturn. And they totally just like submarined right. the whole thing. Yeah, that did not happen. Like, like, like that's that's really like sloppy um, coordination. Although in a pre-technology era, maybe How can it, you, maybe, yeah, maybe maybe it's, it's more forgivable. I don't right. know. Yeah, like that, that, that would be a sign of a very chaotic company if, if people were like, oh, what did Wake you do? up to a surprise. Hey, Japan, what did you just do? <laughs> yeah, exactly. There, there are definitely people in the company that didn't know the confidential announcements and were genuinely right. surprised, but they, yeah. they weren't needing to know for their job. Yeah, but there, so. there was a lot of energy put into making sure everybody was aware of what all the regions were doing. Exactly. Like a lot yes. of effort. Global yeah. coordination was a whole department. Yeah, so. yeah. Final question is from Prince Boo. I think that's Prince Charmless. Yes. Hello, Kit and Krista. When the Switch was revealed in 2016, one of the big third-party games was shown in the trailer was Skyrim. It seems that at the time, Nintendo really wanted to show the world that they want to bring back third-party developers that were non-existent to the Wii U. My question is, if the Switch 2 is revealed, what kind of big third-party game will Nintendo choose to show? 
It could be another Bethesda game like Starfield or a big open world game. They probably want to show the graphical improvements of Switch 2. What do you think? Finally getting EA back? Oh, Just kidding. Unprecedented partnership? Unprecedented partnership. Um, yeah, I think that they definitely will have a lot of focus on third-party support. The thing with Nintendo and the way that they show third parties that's always been tough is like they always show the games that were already out for other consoles like way yeah. long ago. Um, and then it's still cool that it's coming to Switch, obviously, because you get to play it in this like form factor that people like. But it was always kind of a bummer that you never got like the day and date kind of big third party releases that the other, you know, the mm -hmm. like, Xbox and PS5 would get, right? Yeah. So that was a bit of a bummer. So I hope that they have something that will be like, like simultaneous release on Switch 2, PS5, Xbox or whatever. Like that would be really cool. Um, but yeah, like, could there be like, could the next like Final Fantasy game, for example, be? You That's know, been rumored. Right? That would be... But that would not be day and date. Unfortunately. I have two. I have one that would meet your criteria than one, one that wouldn't. The one that wouldn't is um, Elden Ring. Ooh. That could be an exciting if gift. If have DLC coming up for Sure, if, Ring, if you could time it with the DLC. Time it with that. That still has a high enough level of prestige mm. that that feels cool. And then, there, yeah. you know, it is on Steam Deck, but there's like, oh, I can, I can really play this handheld. Like that, that could be a unique differentiator for yeah. that game. The other one that maybe is more appealing to you, the next Assassin's Creed, ah. which is going to be a big, you know, quote, next gen game. Mm -hmm. Ubisoft is always one of the first to jump on a new platform. Yeah, they love that. They love that. Yeah. Like, I think that's like, they probably like to, yeah, this is something we do. We will support any new platform. Right. right. So <clears throat> I think the next one is like that Japan Ninja one. So that'd be perfect. Yeah, I could Good see, fit. I mean, again, that may not, you know, come out for a few months, depending on when the Switch 2 comes out, yeah. like you may need to wait, but I could see them having a Switch 2 version of that and that could, in, in a big announcement, that's, that's an impactful, like, oh, Wow, Assassin's Creed. Mm -hmm. Nintendo got that. That's cool. That'd be cool. Yeah. Another good partner for Nintendo is Capcom. If they can release... Exoprimal? Like the, great. If they can... That's not day and date, though. No. If they can release, like, the next Monster Hunter game, day and date. Mm. Mm. But Monster Hunter's been doing this thing where it's like, Nintendo gets an exclusive game... And I imagine now they're working on the non-Nintendo like exclusive but game. But only because the power is not there. If Switch 2 had the power. Okay, okay. Could we do All like right. big I'm Monster listening. Hunter rides? Just have, just, like, we're back to just one game. I would like that. And then okay. cross-platform play. Cross-platform. Mm. With all the people that are playing Monster Hunter on the other. All right, you talked me into this. Right? Capcom, get on it. That could um, be cool. Not your, not, uh, limitations of power is not your problem to solve, but if N N Nintendo could solve it for you, that would be great. I would love that. That would be great, actually. Okay. Way to go. All right. That's all our questions. Yes. Great. End of Shocktober episode. Um, should we shout out some of our wonderful superstars? Let's do that. All right. Here we go. Aaron Hash. Ben Eichhorn. Maru Mayhem. Eigenverse. Kiss My Blackjack. Mike Chin. Roy Eschke. Switching it up. Underscore. Safezon. BGM Life. Link, the hero of wits. Angela Bycrofter and Peg Molly. Thomas O'Rourke. Kyle LaBeouf. Roberto Nieves. Frederick Wolf Conradson. Andrew Yuhas. Chili. Brew Stash. And Rain Tech. Yay. Um, I'm so excited for our One Up Club graduation service. And I'm oh. also excited that, um, that we had our meetup. And we finally saw Snozzle. We in, did. In person. In that person, was, that's right. In person, Snozzle was, was a delight. Delightful. All right, here we go. A. Ron Burgundy. Ale Alejandro. Astro Dev. Awesome 46. Bad Moon Horizon. Benji B. Blue, Yellow, Gray. Bookum Dano. Bookishly Fab. Brooke Obscura. Brookie Kazooie. Chelly Squirrel. Christopher Lay. Captain Alex. Crim Cat. C. Roper 17. Dachshund. Doinko. Dolce. Dino Punch. Elite Peach. Esparz 50. Fart Priest 69. Fairbev. 
Fernie and Jess Forever. Fox Deploy. Frulio. Garrett Hullfish. Garth the Wolf. Gartu. Gisa 101. Heroic. Iris Marin. Jay Rando. Jabroni Jones. Jeffrey Hernandez. Jerry 92602. Jesse Hernandez. John Responte. Jonathan Rowe. Jordan Collette. Jordan Hemmerley. Joshua Clements. Juji Fruit. Jess Camtro. Justin Leminger. Kawa 2796. Keith Kwong. Kevin Delane. Kilo Kibo. Krista Roddy Kid. Christopia Party With Me. Kyle Gamer Barry Rookie. Kyle Kretzer. Linnell Stickman. Lit. Luminous. Mad Dog 5981. Magnificent EZG plus Callie Marie. Marky Man 64. Mecha Dragon 101. Megan. Michael Cravens. Mikey. Motomania. Mr. Andy Paul. Mr. Beans and Dip. MSM Pokey Gamer. My Tran. Nasir. Nathan Burkhart. Nick E. Ninja 11. Panda Buns. Peggy. Palsy Pace. Paul Gill Network. Prime Factor. Prince Charmless. Reaver. Ryth One. Rob Osborne. Rocks. Rianetta. Sharif Jackson. Sheer Cold Vanilla. Shinryu. Slowbro. Silly Ferret. Snazzle. Spicy Munchkin. Steel Citrone. Sunny Kaduru. Tales of Link. Terra Storm. The Shark Among Men. Thomas Alvarez. Three Rivers. Topher Schmofer. Travis Torline. Trajawi. Tugs Puppy Bear. Tuscoot. Tyler Geis. Tess -tess. Video Game Stupid. Viridian. Virtual Bot. Weeb Kingdom. W.G. Grizzy. Wicked Davy. Will Johnson. Zutiverf. Zelgarov. Zapati. And Zroid. Oh, that was the cleanest read that we've ever had. So clean. It's been two years and we finally figured it out. Finally. Yeah, way to go. It's wow. going to be a mess next week. Oh. <laughs> um, well, don't forget to subscribe to our Patreon at patreon.com slash Kate and Krista to support everything we do here. Thank you. If you're watching this on video, you can go ahead and subscribe to this YouTube channel. Uh, leave us a comment and give this video a thumbs up. If you happen to be listening on audio, you can also go ahead and subscribe. Give us a five-star rating and also leave a written review if you please. Please. And we're on the socials. We are Kit and Krista on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, YouTube, and Threads. Wow. Whoa. All right. That is it. Tell us your TGA nomination predictions in the comments below. And we'll see you later. Bye. Bye.